It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... No! Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Monday, October 24th, 2022. Hello again, everyone. I sure hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another edition of the show. It's a very rainy Monday afternoon here in New York City. Not rainy indoors. Fired up over here. Big post pay-per-view Monday of the program. Lot to get to, lot to discuss following what was one of the most anticipated cards of the year and one that I think delivered. So much to get to. There's a new UFC lightweight champion. His name is Islam Makhachev. There is still the same UFC bantamweight champion. His name, of course, Aljamain Sterling. A lot of big performances, a lot of big time results, some controversial results here and there. Can't wait to get into all of it on what is going to be a big week around these parts and for me as well reminder we're going monday tuesday like the great drake once said we're going back to back this week so monday tuesday offerings for you no wednesday show instead the wednesday show is going to be the choo choo tuesday show does anyone know what i'm referencing when i say choo choo tuesday anyone at all isn't it the simpsons oh look at you frank you see Despite our differences, and Frank and I have uh, had a couple differences today, and particularly because I was hearing the crew discuss the great watch party that they had in this very studio on uh, Saturday afternoon. It was fantastic. Shout out to GC, of course. Shout out to Mike Heck. The entire team, everyone involved, thought they hit a grand slam. But then I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I misheard, I heard people were saying that Frank said that you know, on Saturday, who needs Ariel after all? No. I heard that. I, was, I wasn't I was sure if you were talking about someone else there or something else or if I just misheard it, but apparently I misheard it. You know, we, we are standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, that's what it's like around here. It's a very uh, what have you done for me lately kind of place. And, uh, you know, you, you're uh, on the outside looking in of what was a fantastic show. I mean, GC's pulling surreal gun autograph cards. There's a there's a, a bong thingy. There's special guests. They're interacting. I mean, it was fantastic. And what a great name. Watch Party. I love that name. Who came up with that, GC? Uh, it was a team effort. Brain yeah, I thought trust. that was a great name. Uh, yeah. I figured you would like it. I, I liked it a lot. I, my favorite of those, I like Fight Companion the best. But I think uh, Watch Party is a good second uh, second place, if I know, you will. You push for the you you push for the companion, but uh, you know, inevitably, I, I decided on Party. Smart move. What a great time. Do you feel like uh, Do you feel like a different man? I feel like you got a whole different perspective on what it's like to be here. And uh, now you're like now you you know like you walk around your 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 head is is held high, your chest is puffed out. I feel like you're a different man. Uh, I don't think I'm a different man, but I no. definitely do have a new set of eyes on, uh, you know, being on that side of the wall. Uh, I think it was around the third fight, uh, needing to go to the bathroom sort of trickling oh, yeah. in. I was like, you're just going to have to throw that one, throw that one away. You just fought through it. Oh, yeah. You just, well, you you kind of get distracted and you're like, oh, all right, well, that's that's good. Also, the uh, working through Slack, not being able to talk to anyone directly when things right. are going awry, uh, that's, a, that's a new angle. There was no cough button? You couldn't speak to the, uh, the no. crew? No. No. Frank didn't uh, so yeah, install that. Yeah, new respect for uh, what you do on that side. But you're you're by yourself. I at least had Mike to lean on. So you guys were great. What a tandem! Is this going to be a thing going forward, uh, or only afternoon announced. cards? I'm I'm hoping that it's a thing moving forward. But obviously, you know, the, how are you going to get Frank to show up from ten to one? I don't. I don't know. Oh wait, that's what the requirement is. I mean, ten. P I mean, I guess you could do it from home, right? No, absolutely not. It was great. They have to make the decision. So uh, hopefully there's another one. And I was looking over, by the way, uh, during the day I was at uh, soccer for a little bit. There was a period, you know, you only get one choice, right? You can't listen to two things at the same time on your phone. I was listening to you guys over the broadcast. How about that? That's amazing. Even jumped into the chat a couple times. Say, clouded among the riffraff. You know what? This just in the answer to who needs Ariel. Yeah. We do. Wow. That's very nice of you, Frank. That's very nice. No, I thought it was brilliant. Uh, I think you're looking should... me at a f with a face stricken. You know, with anxiety. there are things that are done in confidence that don't need to be told. <laughs> I to Listen, I think he's a little nervous. Listen, I, uh, I would just uh, the only thing if I could if I can offer one piece of advice, uh, I would say 
every pay-per-view, it's it's too much of a gap between. I think you should do it for every card. So Apex, Cater Allen, Marina Rodriguez against, um, I don't even know who she's fighting. Amanda against. Lemos. Amanda Lemos, Lemos of course. Respect, Arnold Allen this weekend. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm glad that you brought that up because I was going to make the push to uh, include uh, Dana White Contender Series as well. And then in Bellator, the summers. CFL? Obviously Bellator and PFL, and then maybe a little tough watch along. You know? Wow. That is a moneymaker right there. That is beautiful stuff. Uh, go check it out on the YouTube channel. It's up there. Again, the whole team did a great job. Uh, loved what they did with the studio. Loved everything about it. The graphics were amazing. The camera angles. I mean, it was like, wow, what happened to this place? It was incredible. I was on the outside looking in, but uh, I was enjoying being a viewer and a fan. And of course, it was a great card to do one of those four because a lot happened. Now, we're going to get into all of that and a whole lot more. Talk to the guys as well throughout. A reminder that this program, as always, is brought to you by our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. They are the official sports betting partner of the UFC. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and use code Hour for a special offer when you sign up. Again, that's code the MMA Hour only at DraftKings Sportsbook. By the way, uh, why are we doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off to beautiful Glendale, Arizona? Big week, right? Big week for combat sports. Not only do we get the big Cater Allen card at the Apex, but it's the big one. It's the one we've been talking about for a very long time. It's Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva on Showtime pay-per-view. Can't wait for that. We'll be a part of all the festivities, including on Fight Night, some surprises in store. So stay tuned for all of that. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. I haven't been there, I think, since WEC 53, if that's possible. So we'll do a Monday, Tuesday show. Also, you got the return of Katie Taylor this weekend. You've got Lomachenko fighting. There's a lot going on in combat sports, my friends. But, of course, what just happened was UFC 280. We've got a couple of the big winners on today's program. I'll tell you about the lineup. Back into the show, we'll check in with the guys. We shall uh, recap the picks, recap the parlay. We were close, but no cigar. But I still feel like we, we made some strides, uh, and we'll talk about all of that and more. So stay tuned for that. At 2.30, we'll be joined by the great Cheeto Vera, Marlon Cheeto Vera, who, of course, has been in the news not only last week when talking to Piotr Jan about you know why that fight couldn't happen, September, October, but also even on Saturday, Aljamain Sterling mentioning him in his post-fight interview and he's been talking about you know his next fight figures to be in the mix could he get a title shot next or is he one win away i gotta see what's on cheeto vera obviously one of our favorites what's on his mind uh at two o'clock we'll talk to mohammed mohayev who improved to three and zero in the ufc he's still undefeated obviously 22 years young Gets the big finish over Malcolm Gordon. People, you know, hemming and hawing on Twitter. Early portion of his fight. Then he gets the finish and felt like the finish was really important for him because people didn't love his fight in um, in July. Shows the killer instinct. But I think we need to remember that this young man, the pride of uh, Dagestan and the pride of Manchester, is just 22. I mean, he is so very young. And uh, he's either 8-0, 9-0, I don't know what it is. There's uh, differing numbers on the, the, the different websites, but uh, he's a force to be reckoned with and is going to, I think, challenge for that John Jones record. We'll see if he is able to become the youngest champion in UFC history. Uh, the Pride of France, Manon Fioho, had a massive win over Caitlin Chukagian. First time that she's been on the program, she's going to join us at around 7.40 France time, 140 hour time. So I'm looking forward to talking to her. Obviously, she figures to be in the mix now in the women's flyweight division. One would think she's either fighting Alexa Grasso next in what would be a number one contender fight. In my opinion, that's the fight to make. Have Valentina Shevchenko fight Amanda Nunes in January. There seems to be no talk of this, but I still feel like that's the fight to make. Make that fight in January in Rio. It would be a really big deal. Make it the main event, especially now that Charles isn't the champion have Charles fight someone like Benil Dariush as a quote-unquote consolation for Dariush not getting the title shot next because clearly they're going to go in the direction of Volkanovski versus Islam, and then have Shevchenko fight Nunez over there and have Oliveira on the card. You get the best of both worlds. If Oliveira would have retained, he probably main events, but now that he's not the champion, you can't have a main event over the flyweight title fight, so have Nunez on there defending her bantamweight title. That's what I would do. 
115. So in about six minutes from now, five minutes from now, we're going to be joined by Aljamain Sterling, who had the big win on Saturday over TJ Dillashaw. First, a couple of thoughts. Congratulations to Islam Makhachev. He is the new UFC lightweight champion. And it feels like we were, you know, we were headed in this direction. It was just a matter of time ever since Khabib retired about two years ago. And it's amazing when you think about it because yes, this is a new era. Yes, this is the Islam era. Yes, this is the dawn of a new, you know, a new king reigning supreme in what is arguably the best weight class in the UFC. It's 55 or 35, as we've talked about before. But in a weird way, doesn't it feel a little different than your other new eras? Like when Leon beats Usman, that feels like a new era. When Izzy beats Whitaker, that feels like a new era. This doesn't quite feel like that because it feels like the passing of the baton. The Khabib story is so unique because he was in his prime, still so young, still so dominant, and yet he retired abruptly 29 and 0 after the you know untimely passing of his father his mentor his coach his best friend and when he walked away he said it even on that night like islam is next and he's my guy he's my protege i'm his mentor he's just as good if not better than me he will have this title and obviously there's a bit of a dip there because he had to work his way to this spot but now it just feels like all right there was this dip and now the two eras are combining and there's a passing of the baton. And it was a beautiful scene in there in the same city, in the same place where Habib retired. Here's, you know, Habib putting the belt around his guy's waist. Here's Islam giving him, giving Habib the belt. Here's Islam giving a shout out to the late Abdul Manab. It was a great scene for that entire team. And it makes you wonder just how long he is going to hold the title for because he looks incredible. He continues to finish. He is a killer out there. As far as his submissions go, his grappling goes, his striking goes. He looked great. Credit to Charles Oliveira. He hung tough, but Islam's on a different level right now. And one could argue that his toughest fight is going to happen next. It's going to be Alex Volkanovsky moving up. Now is Volkanovsky too small? We'll find out, but this feels like a big deal. Volkanovsky did everything right. He made weight. He was there. He was ready to go. He put himself in position to be talked about, called about. I love that he got in the cage. That was brilliant stuff from DC. It was shades of, you know, Rampage and, and Rashad back in the day. We haven't seen that in a while. I thought it built it nicely. It got us excited about that fight. And I can't wait to see it. And what's also fun for the rest of the weight class is, you know, I, I sort of lamented the fact earlier last week that Islam didn't have that signature win. He didn't have that big number one contender win on his resume. Now, not his fault, right? He was booked to fight Darius. Darius got hurt. He was booked multiple times with RDA. Not his fault. But he just didn't have that win. Well, now, because he hasn't fought those guys leading up to that point, all these guys who had losses to Habib, to Oliveira, they all have a new lease on life. Poirier hasn't fought Islam. Gaethje hasn't fought Islam. Chandler hasn't fought Islam. Dariush, of course, hasn't fought Islam. He was the one guy left for Oliveira, it seemed, at 155, if not for Volkanovsky. So it feels like a whole, you know, a whole new fresh coat of paint on this weight class. It all feels fresh. It all feels new. But it also kind of feels like, you know, the continuation of what ended abruptly around two years ago. So a great scene there, and I'm really looking forward to that fight. That fight is going to be amazing. That fight between Volk and uh, and Islam is going to be incredible. I am really looking forward to seeing that. And credit to Islam, credit to Habib, how he set it up. He's going to Perth. And this works out very nicely for the UFC, because like I said, they were going to be faced with a predicament. If Charles Oliveira would have won on Saturday, he had to fight in Brazil. And so he would defend the 55 title in Brazil. And then you're left with a situation where Volk just did all of that to not even get a 55 belt because it would make absolutely no sense to have Volk not fight in Australia. Having him fight in Brazil would seem very, very weird. Now, I'm sure they would have sold it out and you know they, they would have done well in that regard because the product is hot. They hadn't been to Australia in quite some time. But this is actually a lot cleaner. Now, of course, I know that Charles Oliveira didn't want it to go down like this, but he's going to be fine. I say do Charles Oliveira versus Benil Dariush as, as a potential number one contender fight, Dariush, you know, if there wasn't a Vogue situation, he'd probably be next. And he looked fantastic against Mateus Gamrot. Have him fight Charles in Rio, wins that fight, give him the title shot, have Vogue fight Islam in Perth the following 
uh, the following month, uh, February 11th, it, it would just be, it would just be scenes galore. Great performance from uh, Islam, massive win for Al Jermaine Sterling, massive, massive win. Yes, TJ said he was hurt, but you can't take anything away from Sterling. He is still the champ and now he's got an incredible amount of options. Is it going to be Cejudo? Is it going to be Cheeto Vera? Is it going to be Sugar Sean O'Malley, who had the very close but somewhat controversial win over Piotr Jan? Initially, upon uh, first viewing live, I thought it was 29-28 for Piotr Jan. You watch it again, you can understand why it might have gone to Sean. First round was super close. To me, it came down to the first round. And I remember when they were reading the scorecards and they got to Ben Cartilage, who I think is one of the best judges in the sport. He was the last one. And they said, 29-28. Ben Cartilage scores at 29-28. I was like, all right, this is going to be the one. And I thought he was going to go with Jan. He he scored it for O'Malley, 10-9, uh, 10-9, and then 9-10. No, it was 10-9 first, 10-9 third, and then Piotr Jan gets the second round. I was like, all right, well, what the hell do I know? Uh, I'm no I'm no certified judge. Very, very close fight. And I like the way O'Malley handled it on the back end. It was almost like a guy who had to process what had just happened. And yeah, maybe a guy who thought he was about to lose, but also a guy who had been taken to a place that he had never been taken before. He took some big shots. And, you know, he, he threw some big shots, but also absorbed some big shots. Both those guys. I, I wish that we got two more rounds of those guys because that was incredible stuff. You feel for Jan uh, that that knee proves to be costlier and costlier as the days go by. He would not be in this situation, but that's how it goes in this business. So he's he's going to have to regroup now and see where he goes from here. And I'm very curious to see what they do with O'Malley. O'Malley probably, you know, the big draw right now, but does he want one more? Does he need more time? It's going to be a really interesting story to unfold. We're going to talk about the TJ Dillashaw situation with the guys afterwards because I think we have dissenting viewpoints on his situation. Of course, I think we could all agree that's probably the last title shot that he's going to get given his age, given the way his body is holding up. Uh, one of the all-time greats, you know, he's going to always have to answer for the uh, the EPO. But, you know, there are, look, look, we don't talk about it really with Anderson and he's fighting in five days. So... It's one of those things that he's just going to have to deal with. And quite frankly, I think that he has dealt with it as well as one could possibly deal with those things. Um, there's two ways, right? There's there's one way where you can just kind of shy away and and uh, and deny, deny, deny. You know, the Barry Bonds approach, the Roger Clemens approach, or there's the TJ approach, which, uh, you know, I, I always bring up Andy Pettit. I think Andy Pettit, is, of those baseball players back in the day, if this name means anything to you, handled it the best. He held the press conference. He said, I screwed up. I'm sorry. And it feels like people don't really hold it against him these days. What a performance from Bilal Muhammad. Massive win for him over the previously undefeated Sean Brady. Uh, he has come a very long way. He has incredibly improved. Uh, the aggression, the striking, the power, the technique was really, really impressive against a guy who, you know, I thought was, uh, you know, st still going to be, everyone loses. So still en route to being a title contender, but that's a huge win for Bilal Muhammad. And I would love to see him fight Gilbert Burns next. I think that would be a lot of fun. So we have a lot to discuss as far as 280 is concerned. But first, let us talk to the still reigning, defending UFC bantamweight champion, the man who had the massive win over TJ Dillashaw this past Saturday. He's still in the UAE. He's kind enough to give us a few minutes as he's no doubt still celebrating the big win. He's Al Jermaine Sterling checking in off the top. Hello, Aljo. How are you, my man? Oh, man, I'm on top of the world right now, Ariel. Top of the world. Have you gone to sleep yet, or are you still celebrating from Saturday? <laughs> uh, that was Sunday night. We didn't go to sleep. So today's a new day. Um, still taking it all in, but we got some rest last night. And, uh, yeah, just celebrating. And, uh, man, it was a long 10 weeks. So to not celebrate this would just be kind of silly. I know, despite what the fans are saying. And, you know, obviously making a crutch and excuses for a guy that kind of told me that I had built in excuses coming into this fight. Well, okay. So let's get into that. Had you heard anything regarding an injured shoulder? Did you hear anything, any whispers, any inkling, anything like that leading up to the fight? Leading, hell no. <laughs> TJ doesn't even see nobody from the UFC PI. So no, I had no idea. The only time I heard about that was in between rounds when I believe it was Al or Ray. One of them pointed it out and said, hey, I think his shoulder's out of his socket. 
or his shoulder is messed. I don't think they said out of socket. I think they said, I mean, it was, it was such an in the moment type, type of thing. So I, I don't remember. I have to go back and actually listen. But it's, it felt like they said, I think there's something wrong with his left arm. And I was like, uh, which, wait, I said, which arm? And something like that. And then they told me the left, the left. And yeah, I had no idea going into that second round. And no one knew anything about the guy. And yeah, it is what it is. So could you not feel, because it, it was hard to tell, like, was it an elbow? Was it a hand? Was it a shoulder? Could you feel anything was off about him as you're on the ground? And it looks like you were, you're going to finish it. Like, could you feel that he was not able to move this? Could you, anything like that? Or you're so locked in, you don't notice? So locked in, I did not notice. I, I knew when I had the, the, I was looking for the pass. And I was like, it's either this guy's waiting for me to make a mistake or he really sucks on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I'm being completely honest. Yeah, yeah. People are going to say cringe because they, they say cringe for everything. It's like the word epic. Like we, we went down this rabbit hole already. People just don't have a word to explain something they don't like or don't, don't understand. They just throw the word cringe in there just to sound like they're cool. You know, so I had no idea that the guy wasn't really using his left side of his body. Um, it's very interesting, though, that when he threw that front kick, I caught it and he posted his left arm, which was the arm that the shoulder that came out of the socket. And like, I mean, it's 50-50 chance you got two arms. And fortunately, it was the one I don't know, fortunately, but unfortunately for him, it was the one that was bad and he posted on it. And I've had a shoulder surgery before. I know what it feels like going through training camps with the shoulder subluxing. So I completely respect TJ in that regards. Super tough, super warrior type of mindset to want to go through the fight one go through a training camp like that too so i give the guy all the respect in the world <clears throat> and i said i coming into this fight the hardest thing about this fight was going to be that his tenacity and his dedication to wanting to win the guy just knows no limits he'll cut corners as i've said before i'm not going to change my tune now um because he's just that much of a competitor he really wants to win and i mean the guy's ballsy to think he was going to beat me with my skill set uh, with one arm so it's either he was really really confident or really really stupid so it's it's there's no in between and at the end of the day we know what we take in terms of chances and risk going into the fights i have my own separate injuries that i don't i don't need to go into details on and stuff that could have potentially been severe if it gotten worse to the point where something traumatic just snapped it and then i'm out of the fight completely and i'm probably out on sitting on the sidelines for six to twelve months you know so it's the risk we play man and that's why I think people respect fighters as a whole. So respect to TJ for that. Hats off to him because he took a lot of punishment. Where I truly feel most guys would have came there just to collect the check. And if they found themselves in a bad position, they would have just said, okay, I'm going to gracefully bow out, wait for the ref to pull me, pull him off of me, and just go home to live to fight another day. So, um, again, respect to TJ, even despite all the shit I was talking and his shit he was talking. But that's one of the, that's one of the things about this sport, man. It's once it's done... We sign on the dotted line. I can say whatever I want to you because you're the guy I'm fighting. Fans can say humble, arrogant, cocky. I don't give a shit what you say. I'm fighting this guy, not you. You don't get to tell me my mental approach, my mindset approach, and how I want to play this game and leading up to the fight. That's not fair for fans to try to dictate and put that on, on us and then try to label us and call us cringe or whatever. Like, shut the fuck up, bro. I can say whatever the hell I want to do to promote this fight. I can say whatever it is I want to get in my opponent's head. I can say whatever it is that I think that I believe because I'm the one that's getting in there, not you, not anybody else. It's me and him. At the end of the day, we get to settle it. And when it's done, humble in victory, humble in defeat, and we go home to our families. And that's what it's all about. And that's why I love the sport of MMA. By the way, what did you say to him um, when he was sitting on the stool afterwards? It, it looked like you went up to him to, you were like kind of kneeling down in front of him. What did you say? I just went over to him. I mean, honestly, it was in the moment. My adrenaline was run, uh, running high. Um, I do kind of crazy, sporadic shit when I'm like on, high on adrenaline. I think anybody does. Um, but I just told him, like, man, it's an honor to fight you. I said, win or lose, bro. Even if I had lost, I think I told him, even if I had lost, you get all the respect in the world. You've done something that I always wanted to do. You're somebody I looked up to. And um, respect, man. Nothing res but respect. There's no animosity on my side. And uh, hopefully there's none on yours. I mean, I might not have said it in that many words, but that's pretty much the premises of what I told him. And um, and I could only imagine if he had won, how he probably would have rubbed it in my face. But that's the game we play, man. And guess what? When you lose, 
you really have no say in how your opponent handles the situation. So, again, it comes down to once the fight's over, man, that's it. It's like the ship has sailed and there's nothing you can do about it. I can't go back and jump on him after the bell and, and take a cheap shot. I fought him fair and square like a man. We both made our walk to the octagon and made a better man win. And unfortunately for me, it was my night. Um, people could say whatever they want. And uh, I know people are going to try to discredit my wins. If they, they find any way to discredit me any way that they, they can, which at this point is kind of laughable because no matter what I do, there's going to be some type of fault. I think that just lets everyone in the world know, like, no matter what you do, there's always going to be haters. There's always going to be someone judging. And there's always going to be someone trying to discredit the things that you're doing. Because when you're being great, um, people always want it to be them or they just envy the 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 work ethic or they admire you to the point where they have to hate on you to try to tear you down to make you feel like what you're doing is worthless or not as good or um ain't I don't know it's just it's so we live in a weird world man it's like why can't you just clap for somebody you know like just shut the fuck up put your own bullshit aside and just clap for someone shut that just shut up you know what I mean like like again if I had lost I would have eaten a lot of humble pie yeah and I would have gracefully bowed down and said, hey, man, you were the better man tonight, and that's it. That's how I've always been. I've lost. I've been knocked out. It, it is what it is, man. I've had close fights. It's part of life. It's it's amazing because when it was clear that he was hurt, the first thing that came to mind was, oh, everyone's going to try to discredit Aljo. Like, it was your fault that he got hurt. Like, 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 you were the one who threw the illegal knee. It is very frustrating. And it, I'm wondering in the moment, like, when that hits you. Do you think like, oh, are you even thinking about those things? Like, oh God, here we go again. I'm going to have to deal with this bullshit. Or are you, again, so locked in that that only comes afterwards? Because I know you've seen it and uh, I think it's incredibly unfair to you. You play with the hand that you are dealt with and that was the hand. And if he would have knocked you out with the other hand, no one would have said a thing. In fact, they probably would have been pouring salt on your wounds and said, look, he knocked him out. With, like, come on, it's total bullshit. And uh, it's the, he signed up to fight. He showed up to fight enough with this nonsense. And I feel for you. I really do. Cause it annoys me. I can't imagine how much annoys you. Yeah. It's uh, it doesn't bother me in the moment, but afterwards when I go back and I read the comments, I read the comments. Uh, maybe say, that's the problem. <laughs> I, 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 I'm very heavily involved in social media, man. It's our life. It's our branding. We don't get super crazy marketing and pushes from the UFC outside of certain people. I don't got to name names. I think people all know who they are. And uh, you got to do your own promoting. You got to do your own branding. I don't got a PR agent. Um, I'm not paying for that or I haven't paid for that. So you got to do what you got to do. So I read the comments. I try to see what people are saying, try to get a feel. And it's like there's so many different viewpoints on me. There's like, oh, it's the cocky, arrogant Aljo who's not humble. There's the one that support me because I work hard. There's the ones that think that I'm fake. There's the ones that think that I'm cringe. And the ones that think that I'm cool, I'm like, I don't even know what persona I have with the media. It's so weird. Like people can't make up their mind, but for people to try to discredit me, had this guy had one, it would have been the, the ending. It would have been a never ending parade of the fake champion finally loses who should have been 0-2 against Jan. It's just like, there's literally no winning. And that's why I don't give a shit because, because of that. And people are going to say, and this is what's going to happen. I'm going to say this and people are going to go, oh, he says he doesn't give a shit, but he's reading the comments. I'm going to go, dumb, dumb. I'm reading the comments for my purpose of building the next fight, seeing what people are saying, seeing how to respond in the sense of how to go forward and proceed. And it's all a game. It's a business at the end of the day. So if you can't wrap that around your head, then you're too dense and too stupid. And as I said, common sense ain't so common. And um, I read the comments and it's, it's good for me on the downtime because I get to chill back and relax and just kind of laugh while I'm having a beer, taking my victory lap. So the, the joke's on you. You're sitting here talking shit about a guy who's way more successful than you'll ever be in your life. You probably live in your mom's basement. You probably eat in a bag of Cheetos at the moment. And you're probably trying to discredit my wins, which are more valid than anything you probably did in your entire career or your entire life. And not to be a dick, but that's really what it is. The, the reality sucks sometimes. You know, if anything, I'm, I feel like I'm one of those guys who try to praise people for trying to chase their goals and dreams. But then you got these fucking haters who sit there and doing all these things. And it's just like, dude, there's better things you could do with your time in your life other than trying to suck value from someone who's actually trying and sacrificing things to get to a fight. TJ came to the fight, no quit, didn't tap out, could have bowed out, took his check and went home, took the ass whooping like a man. And I even told Mark Goddard in the back room, I said, bro, 
I talked a lot of shit coming into this fight. So if it's looking bad for me and I'm trying to stay in the fight, let me fight and go out on my shield, please. Because at the end of the day, I want to take my ass whooping like a man. And I'm not looking for an easy way out to say whatever and have excuses to ref early stoppage. Let me go out there and do what I say I'm going to do. And if I can't do it, let the better man win and let him get his moment in the sun. And if it's to pound me out, it's to pound me out, man. Pause. Pause. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. Uh, can I offer this? And people, Can hate- I offer you this in return? Uh, I get what you're saying about the comments and all that. Is there something to be said, though, about letting that toxicity get into like I I'm not I don't want to get into the Andrew Tate stuff I I really don't have any interest in that stuff but I saw you engaging with all these people and there was a part of me that wanted to reach out to you like just be like yo man you're about to fight who cares about like just ignore this for now deal with this later and so isn't there a part of you that's like there's this negativity and it's all coming at you and it could get a little bit intoxicating wouldn't it be better for you and your happiness and your sanity you've got a lot going for you you're a happy man you're engaged why let this even enter your thought process? This is very valid, but for me, I, I truly believe I'm like a dove. I mean, if any one of my friends would talk to you, um, I think Al says it best. For some reason, I seem to thrive in the chaos. Um, it's like I, I bring more weight on my shoulders to try to like prove to myself that I can do more when the this, this scales are stacked against me. I don't know. Maybe I, I'm, I, I'm a little sick in the head. In that regards, and I guess that's a testament to my mental capacity, or maybe it's just a testament to just how sick that I actually am. That maybe I'm not the brightest. Um, I guess that's you could kind of rationalize it that way. But I mean, I think I do a good job of compartmentalizing the situation. I can separate this from that and still focus on the task at hand and not get wound up and distracted. So, social media is my place to kind of escape reality, like everybody else who could go in there and talk shit. And then have no accountability for the words. I could go there, talk shit, disappear, and do the same exact thing that they're doing. Except the difference is I'm actually doing something with my life. And I'm actually going to have to be held at a greater responsibility in terms of the words, my, I guess, the action for my, the words, what would you, how would I even word that? I guess I would have more responsibility for, my words got more responsibility. Like there's, there's a price to pay for my words right. versus everybody else. So yeah, I might bring it on myself, taking on more than I need to in the sense of like, yeah, I should just be focused. But I'm like, yeah, I'm sitting in a hotel room. I'm cutting weight. I'm bored. I'm on my phone. If I'm not doing anything, it's like, I don't know. If, as long as it's not bothering me, if it was getting to me and I was getting riled up and then I was like emotionally distraught, then I could be like, yeah, man, I need to be like deactivated and, and staying away from this. But it hasn't been a deterrent for anything. Like, if anything, I feel like I thrive in the chaos. I like the shit talk. I like the animosity. I like when people talk shit to me because I get to stick it to you and prove you wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And maybe there's something to be said that I could do it the easier way and not need that. But I feel like for me, it's more fuel for the fire. And it kind of gets me wound up, man. There's nothing that gets you more excited when someone talks shit and you could like just shove it in their faces and tell them to suck it, bro. (laughs) that's, that's That's like the ultimate satisfaction. There's really nothing greater than that. I mean, but there's the silent killers who's more stoic. They'll be quiet and they'll do it peacefully. No, nah, I like chaos, bro. I like chaos. Let's bring the fucking houses, burn the fucking bridges, burn the city down, and let's get crazy and let's see who survives the, the fire first, you know? The yeah. longest, you know? That's that's kind of my mentality. And um, again, if it's not deterring from my performance, my training, my sleep, and my peace, I'm at, I'm at peace. I can go do this, get off the phone and forget about it, literally like this, seconds. Where some people, I can say something, I know it burns them, and they're going to be commenting, and then I don't remember that I even commented that. That, that. that for me is satisfaction, because for them, they're wound up, and for me, I'm sitting there, I'm on a beach somewhere, I'm in freaking Dubai, where are you? Where, where are you? In the middle of nowhere? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm living the dream. I think, I think life's good on my side, but, my side, but I, I, I get what you're saying, and uh, I've had people reach out to me and tell me, like, dude, stay off social media, you don't need this type of thing. But the one reason I even engage in that, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole again, is because my words were twisted. And that's the last thing I refuse to do is to let someone try to twist my words and manipulate them and try to paint me in an image that I'm not and to try to label me as something that I've never once agreed with, never once sided with, never once said I backed or supported and then try to make me look like I'm some type of asshole because I'm, I'm not that guy. And if you think that I'm going to be that guy and bow out and just apologize 
and say, you're right, I should. No, motherfucker. I'm going to sit there and tell you what I said. You're going to listen to me. I'm going to have an adult conversation. If you don't want to listen, then guess what? I'm going to still say what I'm going to say. And maybe, again, maybe it's too, maybe I'm doing too much, but that's just me, man. I can't be anybody else but Aljamain Sterling. If you like it, you can do. If you don't, dude, cool. there's other people you could go gravitate to and cling to, man. I'm going to be me. I'm going to be me. I'm going to be authentic and I'm not going to change for nobody. All right. So it's been two days. I feel like you have three options, three really good options. Obviously, Sean O'Malley. Then you got Cejudo. Dana brought him up at the post-fight press conference, which I thought was really interesting. And then you've got Cheeto Vera. Who do you think it's going to be? If they came to you right now, who are you leaning towards? Isn't Dana the funniest guy? <laughs> Why is that? Uh, it, no, I want you to answer. I want uh, you to answer that. What? <laughs> I mean, f- actually, funny would be the last thing I would call him, but I guess it depends on in what way. When I say funny, funny can have many different Yes, exactly. Views. I mean, I like Dana on a personal level, like Do outside you? of the cameras and everything. Okay. I like Dana. All right. But some of the things that he actually says is like beyond like me sometimes. Like you go on record, you say whoever wins this fight is clearly getting the number one shot because it makes sense. Right. After the fight, everything completely changes and then you throw Henry Shadudo in the mix. And I'm just completely confused because I'm just like, this guy hasn't fought in over two years. You don't want to give him a title shot to go be triple champ, triple champ, which I'm not opposed to because I think if anyone deserves it based on merit, it's him. And uh, I'm not a hater by any means. But then the guy comes back after two years, fought at 125, fought, I think twice maybe at 35. And he's supposed to come back, get an immediate title shot after doing what? You know what I mean? So now it's like I almost feel, and I could be completely wrong, I almost feel like they're looking for a last hope of someone who could take out Aljamain Sterling. And they're hoping that they can make this wrestling thing, this narrative of the Olympic wrestling now. D1 wasn't good enough. Now the Olympic wrestling might be good enough to take out the D3 wrestler. Um, but I can tell you one thing for certain. This, this ass woman is an equal opportunity employer. All races, all colors can get it. You know what I mean? So it, it really don't matter. So if it's Henry, if it's Cheeto from Ecuador, if it's O'Malley, with the colorful hair, Mr. Sugar Tits. If it's a rematch with Jan, because we know the, the UFC likes to give title shots to people who are coming off losses. If they want to give it to Sanhagen, you know, th- there's there's plenty of options. Right now, I'm on my victory lap. I'm going to enjoy it because I think it's well-deserved. And uh, they got to do something with Marab. Give my man an opportunity to make his claim for a number one contender fight so that he can get his opportunity to fight for a belt so that I can figure out what I'm going to do, whether it's staying at 135 or going up to one. 45, so he can figure out what he's going to do and we can try to plan around this, you know. Um, it would be nice to have four champions all come from Long Island and having Georgia have their first UFC champion as well. Do you think that the UFC and in particular Dana White was upset that you won on Saturday? <laughs> I don't I, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm a couple of, I'm a couple of uh, rum, rum drinks in right now, but um, <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> Hey, I'm on my I'm on my victory lap, right? Why not yeah. enjoy? I'm in Dubai. I'm Dubai. Yeah, I'm man, in enjoy. Dubai. Hopefully, you guys talk behind the scenes. Soon, but uh, I, I, you break bread at all? You I share. love it. <laughs> uh, we have before before the fight. Um, we had some good conversations where you know we're supposed to have a sit down. He said, "You know, I, I don't know what's too much of being like disclosing to the to the headlines anymore because no longer are all the commissions disclosing fighter pay, which I didn't know, which I found out after the Jacksonville fight when I did that podcast on my my um." YouTube channel, and I disclosed that, and I had no idea that that wasn't disclosed. And I was like, "Oh, now, now I kind of feel stupid." Kind of, I thought it was disclosed, but it wasn't. Um, so I don't know what's too much is too much because then I can say one thing's for certain: my bank account, I finally hit a million dollars comfortably um, with my three houses and all my other investments, not including those. Just straight up, actually breaking that, and I'm super proud of that. It might not be something to brag about to other sports. But for someone who's been in a sport like this where the pay scale isn't the craziest, um, I'm proud to say, like, of all the things I've been able to do, buy my mom a house, buy myself a house, um, where I'm at right now, I'm in a very good place in my life. And um, thankfully, it's because of Dana and Hunter and those guys, Lorenzo, all those guys, because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have this platform to do this. And um, I don't know what they really think about me, man. Like I said, behind closed doors, we it's all great conversations. We're all cool. But in terms of business, business is business, and I get that. So they're going to try to appeal to the market as much as they can appeal to make the most dollars that they can make for the company. And I understand this. 
So there's no hate on me or regret, I should say. Um, because I want to make as much money as I could possibly make. So I get it. Um hopefully we honor the 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 agreement that was made before this fight and we have a sit down and we can see where everyone is at and see what the next big fight is on the table. Okay. And and by the way, uh, you, you I asked you last time, but like, do you have a, a, a preference? Do you have a preference as to, like right now? Are you leaning towards one of the three guys? Honestly, Ariel, if I'm being honest, I haven't even thought about it. Okay. I mean, I literally tweeted to Molly, I think last night or two nights ago, that I would have actually hung out with the guy. Um, I felt bad for Jan. Um, I felt like he got, didn't think he got robbed. I think Amali was a little shocked and perplexed at the decision as well. I think he kind of caught him off guard. That was a split decision. I think it even caught him more off guard that he won. Um, and now he knows what it feels like when I was in the same position. And the difference is I actually knew I won the fight. And he's on the side where he won the fight. And he doesn't even know if he really won the fight until he goes back and watch it. Where in the fight, I knew based on the strike count that I freaking won the fight. You know? So, um at the end of the day, man, this is the most competitive division. People are going to try to find any way to discredit me. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, keep racking up these Ws. The numbers won't lie when you go back and look at the history books. Uh, I should have the most wins in the Bantamweight division, but they don't count my hand in Burrow win because California Athletic Commission decided on the week of the fight to make it a catch weight at 140. So technically, I do surpass TJ with the most Bantamweight wins. But also technically, for the record, since it was a catch weight, I don't get that one win. So I'm tied with TJ right now, which kind of sucks in that sense, because it, I feel like I'm kind of denied history in that, in that regards. But um, there's so many good options. Henry's there. Cheetos is there. Sugar Tits is there. Um, Piotr is still there. And uh, the Sandman is there as well. So there's, there's a lot of opportunities for me to, to go out there and still create history and do what I need to do. And um, I think my performance, dude, I caught the kick. I outstruck him in the beginning of the fight. And he threw the kick, everything that we saw that we trained for. I studied tape, knowing that he might throw that. And we knowing that we're going to, I can show you so many different things on my sparring footage where we worked so many nuances of TJ that we prepared for. And show you so many different times where I caught kicks, ran the guy down, took him down. And that's exactly what would have happened. They post their arm. And again, I've dealt with the labrum um, surgery before. I fought eight professional fights, seven, seven, because then my eighth one is when I came back from the surgery. And then I got signed to the UFC. So I know what it feels like to go with that. And again, not knocking TJ, but for someone that made up all these things in the world and all the fans bandwagoning a cheater and saying that I'm building in excuses for when I lose. Like I said, man, if I lose, I take my L like a man and I go home. Whether you're cheating or not, I don't give a shit. I lost. I stepped in the octagon. I took the chance. Win or lose, I go home with those results. So for him, to, as soon as the fight's over, to say that, and then the fans try to use that against me and say, oh, he dropped, he heard it in the first 30 seconds. I'm like, dude, I took him down. He made it to the fight thinking that he could beat me, right? So, guys, stop making excuses for these people because at the end of the day, these, these excuses don't write checks. Wins do. And clearly, I'm in the history books and um, we'll see which fight is going to be the biggest. I think if anyone is the biggest fight, maybe it's Omali in terms of name value, in terms of performance. I think he saw what I did to TJ. He saw what I did to Jan and any of these other previous opponents that were in the top five, top 10. And remember, Ariel, my third UFC fight, I fought the number six guy ranked in the world. And since then, I haven't fought anyone that was unranked. Damn. So my resume speaks for itself. These guys yeah. who are catching me in the most bantamweight wins, they fought guys that were unranked. They fought guys that were on losing records and things like that. I never did any of that. No shortcuts, no handouts. So if you can't respect that, then... You don't respect the game. You're just looking at the media and running with headlines and being a hater just because you're just a fucking hater. Um, and it sucks to live a life like that. Who, who wants to be in a life surrounded by hate? If you're in my circle, bro, and you're a hater on anybody, dude, that's an issue. And I'll call you out on that. You know what I mean? So that there's there's no place in my in my crew for that. Like you can say someone sucks or whatever, but at the end of the day, we always say we respect people for what they've done. You know, mm -hmm. and we don't got to like you, but we're going to always respect you, you know, and you don't got to like me, but you're going to respect what I do. You're going to respect the body of work that I've accomplished. And um, we'll figure out who's the, be the best fight, man. I feel like no one cares about the Henry Cejudo fight, but the hardcores. I feel like if you want to talk about dollar signs, it's Omali. You want to talk about legacy, it's Peter Yan. If you want to talk about an intriguing fight because they thought I got through him really quick and it might have been lucky. You got Sanhagen. 
So I got options, man. Don't mention I'm a Cheeto, huh? We're going to no figure Cheeto. it out and see what... Did I say Cheeto? No? No, you didn't. Um, you know, and Cheeto's a weird one, man. You know, because we were kind of cordial and cool before this whole weird thing happened between us because someone asked me about the O'Malley fight. And I said it was a weird thing, but Cheeto threw the kick. I said he won. I was like, it was a fluky thing that happened in terms of the reaction, but Cheeto won. And he took that as like disrespect. And the guy started going off on like he was butthurt. You would have felt like someone literally stuck their fingers up his asshole, um, how he reacted and started getting super defensive. I'm like, dude, who gives a shit? Like you won the fight. You got both checks. Who cares, bro? Like you fight again. If you don't fight again, who cares? You got the W, you go home. Who cares? That, 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 that's literally how I live my life. People care way too much. And uh, if that's what he needs to get up in the morning to feel animosity, to to want to get in there in the octagon to compete, then I get it. But I don't know. I, I got, man, I'm here to compete against the best in the world. And if Cheeto's the guy that they think is going to be the guy to beat me, dude, I think I do the same exact thing to him as well. You know, he might have a little bit better jujitsu. He might have two arms, two arms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I think we can all agree, man, if I take you down, it's, it's literally a problem. Aljo. Congrats on the win. I'll let you go. Uh, appreciate you doing this while you're celebrating and everything. Another big win for you. I'm curious to see how this goes. Curious also to see this time next year where you're at. Maybe you're fighting for the 45 belt. Marab's fighting for the 35 belt. There's a lot of big fights for you in the coming year. So uh, congrats. Enjoy it. And don't let the haters get you, man. Don't feed the trolls because it's like a vicious psych. I know, I know. It's just a lot. It's a lot. Don't I'm going to feed them. Oh, okay. It ain't going to get to me, Ariel. I'm going to uh, feed them, but it ain't going to get to me. I'll tell you that. All right. Enjoy it, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Guys. All right. There he is. Aljamain Sterling joining us from uh, Dubai. Big win for him. And uh, I'm really curious to see. We'll talk to Cheeto in about an hour or so about all that. Now, let's go to our next guest. Also had a big win uh, on the pay-per-view broadcast. Massive win for her. She is the pride of France. She is maybe the number one contender at 125 pounds undefeated in the UFC. She is on quite the run 10 and one as a pro lost her pro debut. Hasn't lost since she's the beast Manon Fioreau. She's joining us right now from France. Bonjour Manon or bon soirée. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Ça va? Oh, ça va très bien. And uh, thank you for doing this after coming back from uh, Abu Dhabi. I think your head coach Aldric is with you as well. Merci d'être revenu après Abu Dhabi, à ton head coach avec toi. Oui, il est avec moi, yes. Ah, ok, et uh, félicitations à, 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 à vous et à Adric et toute l'équipe. Uh, I just said thank you and, and uh, congratulations to the entire team. What was your experience like fighting, uh, you know, a top contender on this big card? There was a lot of attention, a lot of uh, spotlight on you. The whole experience now, what, what, did you, uh, what did you take away and how did you feel about it all? Qu'est-ce que tu as ressenti d'être mis en avant, d'être sur la, la carte principale contre la top, la numéro 1 de la KT qu'est-ce que, ça, qu'est-ce que tu as ressenti euh, bah, C'était quand même beaucoup de pression. C'était, c'était la numéro 1 de la catégorie. C'est quand même que mon cinquième combat à l'UFC. Donc, euh, c'était, c'était un beau défi. Mais voilà, j'ai, j'ai su gagner ce combat. Je n'ai pas fait le, le combat que, que j'aurais voulu, mais je suis, je suis contente de mon combat. J'ai, j'ai gagné contre la numéro 1. Donc, euh, c'est l'essentiel. Yeah, for sure, a lot of pressure. It was my first uh, big card and uh, on main card too against the first contender of the division. Uh, it's just my my five fight in, in UFC. So yeah, absolutely a lot, lot of pressure. I don't do the fight what I expect, but the most important is I win and uh, and now uh, <clears throat> I'm prepared for the future. And uh, Aldric, this is very exciting for me. You know why? Because I've interviewed a lot of people who don't speak English, you know, Brazilian, uh, Japanese, etc. I don't usually know what they're saying, but I understand what she is saying. So I'm trying to see if you're doing the translation correctly. And you're doing a great job so far. I just want to let you know. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, I noticed that Manon said she didn't like the fight that she fought. So could you tell us why didn't you like the fight that you fought on Saturday? Pourquoi tu as pas... Euh, 100% content de ta prestation euh, bah, Déjà, j'ai mis du temps à rentrer dans le combat. J'ai, j'ai, le premier round, je suis passé euh, un peu à côté. Euh, après, voilà, je voulais vraiment euh, finir ce combat. J'avais travaillé pour ça. Et, euh, et voilà, je ne suis pas arrivée à finir ce combat. Après, euh, je suis rentrée deuxième, troisième round. J'ai réussi à accélérer, à faire le combat. Mais le premier round, ça a été compliqué à rentrer dans le combat. Oui, je pense que mon premier round était... Not as a, uh, as a, I expect. Uh, I make time for for be focused and 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 pay attention to to my game plan and and all the shit I want to do. 
But um, I think I do a, a, a good, good job in the second round, and uh, I use my wrestling at the good time in the third. So yeah, the first one definitely it's not uh, as I expect, and and for the fight, I if I can choose, if I think about what I want, I want to finish this fight, but uh, another fight, not this one. She's a very tough fighter, and she makes a lot of people look bad. Um, I'm wondering if she was frustrated. Like, would you would you say that Caitlin is a frustrating fighter to fight against? Est-ce que tu penses que, que Caitlin est frustrante à, à, à combattre parce qu'elle elle a elle a fait paraître pour nul beaucoup d'autres combattants? Euh, Qu'est-ce que tu en penses? Ouais, ouais, c'est ça, c'est ce que je me suis rendu, je me suis rendu compte dès le début du combat. Après, on savait qu'elle se déplaçait très bien, qu'elle avait un très bon fight IQ. Mais c'est vrai que je pensais pas que ça allait être, euh, allait être aussi compliqué et frustrant justement puisque j'arrivais pas à, à avancer, elle faisait que reculer alors que moi je voulais vraiment euh, rentrer fort dans ce combat et du coup c'était vraiment compliqué de, de faire un beau combat, c'est ce que je m'y attendais. J'ai essayé de, de vraiment euh, vouloir rendre ce, ce fight beau mais avec une combattante contre Lissine c'est vraiment compliqué puisqu'elle elle cherche juste à marquer ses points, à se déplacer donc euh, voilà il faut aller la chercher. Yeah, absolutely. Before the fight, I know Caitlin was very technical, has a good footwork, footwork and a really, really good fight IQ. But um, during the fight, I understand she's uh, very frustrated to fight again because she disengaged a lot and she threw a lot, a lot of punch, but not efficient uh, striking. Just, just she, she threw and she moved, she threw and she moved. So yeah, uh, definitely it was a, a very technical and difficult for. Uh, to fight and stand up again, Caitlin. By the way, speaking of frustrating, was it frustrating for you to see the UFC finally come to France in September and not be a part of the card? I know you were booked, but unfortunately it didn't work out. What was that like for you? How frustrating was it? À propos de frustration, c'était aussi frustrant de ne pas faire ça à la carte de Paris, de ne pas être sur la carte de Paris devant les fans français. Uh, oui, c'était super frustrant, surtout que j'étais là, j'étais dans le public, j'ai vu l'ambiance, le public français, qui, qui était, c'était une très, très bonne ambiance. Donc, euh, ça va être très frustrant. Après, vu que j'ai su très vite que j'étais sur la carte d'Abu Dhabi, j'étais contente aussi. Oui, yeah, definitely. Je pense que les fans français montrent à tout le monde qu'ils sont l'un des meilleurs dans le monde. Il y a un grand show et je suis heureux de voir tous mes fighters français gagner et faire un grand show. Mais oui, c'est frustrant de ne pas être sur le show. Mais je like Abu Dhabi aussi. C'est une uh, destination pour moi. So, yeah. Uh, after that, I'm, 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 I'm happy after to, to, to know I'm in the Abu Dhabi Cup. So I said after your fight that I think you versus Alexa Grasso as a number one contender fight makes the most sense. I'd love to see Valentina fight Amanda Nunes for the 35 belt. You guys fight. The winner fights her. We're not quite sure what's going on with Tyler Santos. Do you like that idea? And if not, uh, do you have a different idea? Lui, il aimerait beaucoup de voir combattre contre Alexa Grasso et il aimerait aussi que Valentina fasse le combat à 61 contre Amanda Nunes. Qu'est-ce que tu penses de cette idée ou est-ce que tu as d'autres idées en tête euh, Non, c'est ça. Moi aussi, bah, Alexa Grasso avait déjà collé euh, pour ce combat en fait, puisqu'elle a dit qu'elle qu allait regarder ce combat et qu'elle voudrait prendre la gagnante. Euh, moi, je suis d'accord pour ça. Euh, je pense que ça va être un beau combat puisque c'est aussi une très bonne strikeuse et je pense aussi que du coup, Valentina va vouloir monter en 61, mais... Après, moi, je verrai ce que, ce que l'UFC décide. Je n'ai jamais refusé personne. Donc, euh, voilà. Si moi, je veux bien Grasso, mais si c'est quelqu'un d'autre, je peux prendre n'importe qui. Oui, yeah, in fact, let's, let me tell you, I never say no to Mark Mana and all the UFC team when they ask about an opponent. Never. Uh, two days after, before the fight, I, I never say no. Uh, I'm agree with you. I think it was the good way. I want to, to say, Alexa, call us. They talk about, she talk about the fight. She talk uh, about, she calls the winner of Ketling against me. So I have to say yes. And uh, for sure, I do this fight. Uh, I think it's a good striker. And I think it was uh, a good fight for the fan and for the, for the division. Yes. Do you think if you win that fight, you should get a title shot? Après ce combat, tu penses que tu vas direct au title shot? Oui, j'aimerais. C'est moi ce que j'aimerais. Absolutely, for sure. And what did you think of her performance against uh, Araujo two weeks ago? Were you, were you impressed by what she did? Yeah, Qu'est-ce que tu penses du combat contre Viviane et est-ce qu'elle t'a impressionné euh, Alors, je ne l'ai pas encore euh, regardé, mais du ah. coup, je vais, je vais le regarder. Mais, ah. <laughs> mais euh, ce que j'ai entendu, ce n'était pas très impressionnant. Donc, euh... To be honest, <laughs> I don't take a look at the fight. Uh, but uh, for sure, now, I pay attention and uh, I, I look uh, many times. 
Uh, I, I did uh, notice that she said on the back end, but from what I hear, it wasn't very impressive. Yeah. Uh, she said that, right? A lot of, a, a lot of people say it's, it's not a, a good win for Alexa. She's not very impressed, yes. By the way, why, why didn't you watch it? Why did you watch it? Uh, I'm focused about my fight and uh, I, I don't really want to, to see fight um, when I prepare mine. Fair. That is fair. Um, and uh, do you feel like based on what you've seen from Valentina, do you feel like you have the style to beat her? Est-ce que tu, tu penses que tu as le style pour battre Valentina? Qu'est-ce que tu en penses? Uh, oui, je pense. Uh, après, uh, surtout, je pense que le fait que ça soit en 5 rounds, ça peut vraiment... Uh, être être bien pour moi euh, après bah, j'ai vu le combat de par exemple Valentina contre Kathleen et elle l'a elle l'a pas striké en fait elle l'a amené directement au sol donc euh, je pense que j'ai le striking pour la battre j'ai la lutte pour défendre la lutte ou attaquer et je pense que j'ai plus de cardio donc sur en cinq rounds je pense que j'ai mes chances vraiment de gagner yes definitely I think the, the five five round was a, a, a very good fact for me and uh... I saw the Valentina fight against Caitlin and she don't strike against her. She just use her wrestling and the, her judo throw. So I think I can do a, a very good stand-up fight against her. And I think I have the wrestling defense and offense um, to, to, to improve and, and to, to show uh, I'm, I, I can win against Valentina. So just curious, why not uh, shoot for the Valentina fight now? Why not ask for that now? Curiosité, pourquoi tu veux pas Valentina tout de suite? Euh, parce que j'ai fait mon cinquième combat à l'UFC, Valentina a beaucoup d'expérience et c'est la seule, pour au jour d'aujourd'hui c'est 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 la seule chose sur laquelle elle pourrait me battre c'est peut-être sur l'expérience donc j'ai envie de, de faire encore un combat pour euh, voilà pour travailler encore euh, encore quelques trucs qui m'a manqué justement sur sur ce combat. Et, voilà. I'm pretty sure for now Valentina have just experience against me. Uh, I think uh, against Caitlin I. Uh, I see. I understand. I have just five fights in the in a big stage like UFC, and uh, I think one more was good for my my career and my my thinking about fight my fight IQ. By the way, I read um, that you uh, used to snowboard a lot, and uh, snowboarders have a very good uh, uh, steel, right? They have a very good uh, like style, the way they dress. And then I see you at the press conference. Your hat was great at the press conference, and even now I see the shoes back there. Your hat here. What about this uh, outfit that you were wearing at the press conference? I like that hat very much. Was uh, where was that from? That hat. Uh, I see that you have done snowboard and that you, in general, the snowboarders have a lot of style. At the press conference, you have shown a very beautiful hat and a very very beautiful tenue. Can you tell us a little bit about where the hat comes from? Yeah, I already knew that there was a press conference. I had worked on my hat because for me, it's important too. Donc euh, voilà, je vais chercher une tenue qui pouvait être stylée, qui me correspondait. Et, et voilà, j'avais envie d'arriver vraiment stylée pour cette première conférence. Et je pense que c'est ce que j'ai fait. Yeah, when I saw the, the, the schedule and, and see the, there is a press conference, I think a lot about it. And uh, I really want to, to show something new and something like me. And uh, that's why I chose uh, this Gucci stuff. I like it. Gucci. I, uh, I, I approve of this. Very high class. By the way, are, do you co collect those toys back there or is that uh, Aldrix or someone else? He loves Gucci. Gucci. Do you collect the figurines that are behind you or is it me? It's all two. Yeah, uh, we like it together. I like them too. I have a bunch myself. I got this one. I got a bunch here. Do they have a, a Manon Fioro toy? Have they made one? Have you tried to get one? Est-ce qu'il va y avoir euh, des, des, des jouets maintenant sur ou pas encore J'espère, j'espère qu'il y en aura bientôt. Yeah, I really want it. I really want it. Also, are you a big shoe fan What's uh, this picture behind you over there Est-ce est que tu es fan de sneakers aussi uh, Oui, oui, aussi. Tous les deux aussi. On a, on a beaucoup de sneakers dans la maison. On a, on a une pièce réservée que au basket, comme un magasin de chaussures à la maison. <laughs> Absolutely. To be honest, we have one room with uh, all the shoes we have, and uh, it's uh, Aldrich and me both uh, like sneakers, and uh, we are sneakers addicts for which sure. Which is which is your favorite sneaker right now? Quels sont tes quels sont tes sneakers préférés maintenant, là, au moment où on parle? Maintenant, le plus que j'ai, c'est des Jordan, mais je sais pas lesquels. Jordan Jordan One. Old, old school, Jordan 1. All right. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I also noticed on your Instagram, um, are you a big fan of the Reese's, uh, the Reese's uh, cereal, the Reese's Pieces cereal, the Puffs? That's your favorite? Tell me again. 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 Tell me I love them, but I never can eat it. So just after the fight, I have one or two weeks. I can eat uh, uh, everywhere every what I want. So, yeah. Do you know what's crazy? Now, you know what's crazy about this? Um, the producer on my show, his name is GC, Connor in the back. He is a big fan of yours. He was wearing your T-shirt on Saturday night uh, or Saturday afternoon in support of you. And last week, he told me his favorite cereal is the same one, the Reese's Puffs. So I feel like you guys are a kindred spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Est-ce que tu as compris ou je traduis? Ah, le producteur de l'émission d'Ariel, <laughs> il est fan de toi, il a même porté son ton t-shirt pendant pendant ah, ton oui. combat pour te pas porter du support ouais. et lui aussi, il aime il aime les mêmes céréales. <laughs> tu penses qu'il y a tu penses qu'il y a une aura derrière ça? <laughs> il a dit il a dit que c'est son favori, it's his favorite, that one. And then I see it on your Instagram. I was like, what what is going on here? And now I'm wondering if he picked it because he knows so much about you, that's why he said it was his favorite. Do you understand? It's a little bit weird. Peut-être qu'il a dit ça parce qu'il t'a vu que... Peut-être que c'est devenu ses favoris parce qu'il <rire> a vu que c'était déjà les tiennes. Il faudra lui demander un sponsor, du coup. Oui, nous lui avons demandé, peut-être, et peut-être que nous parlons sur le sponsor avec le Reyes Brand. Ça serait bien. Tu fais toujours du snowboard Tu fais toujours du snowboard euh, bah Non, Aldric me l'interdit parce qu'il a peur que je me blesse. Ah. Uh, Adric say no about practice because uh, he don't want an injury. Yes, I understand. By the way, are you fa who who do you support in uh, in uh, in football? Are you a PSG fan? Yeah, au niveau du football, c'est une équipe préférée. Tu aimes le PSG? Je regarde pas trop le football, mais non, je supporte le l'OGC Nice quand même. Yeah, in uh, I I don't pay a lot of attention to football, but uh, uh, we are we have a, a big team in, in Nice too. It's called it OGC Nice, okay. uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, if I have to support someone, I support my team. And and when you were coming up, who who were your inspirations in terms of people that you tried to emulate, people that you look up to as fighters? Quand tu as des des gens qui t'inspirent dans le sport en général ou des combattants? Euh, oui, dans le sport en général, j'aime beaucoup Cristiano Ronaldo, euh, Rafael Nadal, euh, Kobe Bryant. Okay. Euh, I think I know how to produce those Yes, names. I know those names. What about fighters? Were there fighters that she tried to emulate? Um, alors, mon premier fighter que j'ai vraiment aimé, c'était TJ Dilacho. Oh. Um, Ramza Chimaev et uh, Charles Oliveira. Wow. And two of those guys, so you said TJ Dilacho, Ramza Chimaev, Charles Oliveira. Did you get a chance to speak to them last week in Abu Dhabi? Est-ce que tu as parlé avec eux la ce week-end Est-ce que tu as déjà parlé avec eux euh, Non, j'avais honte, je n'ai pas parlé avec eux. Oh non J'étais impressionnée. Oui, ouais, j'ai parlé à... La pas la dernière fois Ah oui, Ramzad, j'ai déjà parlé avec lui, mais pas cette fois-là, on s'était déjà croisé avant. Et après, bah, tu disais, j'étais dans, dans le vestiaire avec lui euh, pour l'échauffement, tout ça. Donc, euh, j'étais impressionnée en fait du... Charles. Yeah, uh, Charles, <laughs> I, I, I was in the même locker room than uh, Charles and uh, TJ, but I'm focused on my fine and a little, and little shame to talk wow. there, so I don't. I don't. But uh, I have the same management than Kamzat, so yeah, uh, we talk we talk about fight and uh, and performance together. That must have been unbelievable. Here you are in the same locker room as two people that uh, you look up to. That's pretty incredible. You were the only one that won, by the way. C'est incroyable que tu sois dans, dans, le, dans le vestiaire des deux de fighters que tu, que tu admires beaucoup. Ouais, c'était ouais, incroyable. Ça faisait vraiment bizarre en fait, d'être là avec eux. Et, et j'ai oublié aussi euh, Georges Saint-Pierre. Et d'ailleurs, je l'ai eu au téléphone euh, la veille de, de mon combat, puisque j'étais avec Christophe Midou, et c'était son ancien entraîneur. Du coup, il me l'a passé et il m'a dit quelques mots euh, euh, la veille de mon combat. Yeah, it was awesome to be with, the two guys, with these two fighters uh, in the locker room. But... I forgot to tell you about uh, GSP and uh, uh, George called Christophe to to tell me uh, some good thing uh, before the fight, and uh, I'm I'm really happy to hear that. Incredible. Uh, and last thing, when in a perfect world would you like to return to action? Dans un monde parfait, quand est-ce que tu voudrais retourner à l'action? Um, si j'ai pas de blessure, parce que j'avais une petite blessure au genou après le combat, mais si c'est rien de grave, euh, mars ou avril. 
I have I have to check my knee in uh, uh, Wednesday afternoon, but for sure it's not it's not hard, it's not painful. But uh, if it's okay, if I need it's okay, I think in March or April it was perfect for me. Okay. Well, uh, again, um, uh, plaisir de te rencontrer pour la première fois. Félicitations. Bon courage. Bon esprit. It was great to see you fight in there, get the big win. And uh, j'espère the next one is going to be uh, Grasso. And uh, and then you get to fight for the belt if all goes well. So thank you very much. Merci à, à, à vous et Aldric. Enjoy the win and talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, there she is, Manon Fioro, getting the big W. Great to talk to her, and that was fun. I don't know if that's ever uh, that's ever really worked out for me. Where we've, ever, I think, Surreal Gun was on the show early on, and he did he, he have did, a translator with him. Yes, it was Fernand Lopez, I believe it was, and so I could understand, but. It wasn't quite like this. I remember the connection was really bad. This was during the ESPN days. And uh, to hear what she was saying and know, and then to see if the translator, who's her head coach and I believe her partner as well, um, to see if he was getting everything. Caught him on one there where he said, where she said, and he didn't uh, translate that she had heard that the Grasso win wasn't uh, the most exciting. But otherwise, he was pretty damn good. GC, what about this? Last week you tell us your favorite cereal. Is it Reese's Puffs or Reese's? Yeah, Reese's Puffs. Yeah. And then I see today it's her favorite cereal. I mean, it was just meant to be for me to be a huge fan of her. That's that is crazy. wild. Throwing me under the bus, making me blush back here. Making well, me that's not throwing. I'm just giving you props. Making me making me seem a little weird to her. <laughs> oh, no. You, you, didn't even, you didn't show any love to her. I mean, she's like the she's got the whole hype beast thing with the Gucci North Face hat. She collects the shoes. Even the Reese's Puffs box. Uh, it was, it was like a like, special edition? Yeah, the cause edition. Like... Which is K A W S, like a. I don't even know what that is. I'm looking like at it right now. A, yeah, it's like an artist. Oh, and with you the X. Ask her what milk she uses on that cereal. That's a good question. Uh, that actually is a good question. Wait, you really think I threw you under the bus there? Hey, man, you know, maybe you were like, you, I think I said you're a big question. fan. You're like, yeah, it's a, it's a little weird. That he, <laughs> that he like, he, no, I just, like, you know, I, listen, I know you like to do deep dives. No, and, I love Reese's Puffs. It just. And and I like I, I know fandom. I know you like to support right like when you support you support of course uh, you buy the shoey thingy you you buy the shirts you buy the merch so I figured you saw that and maybe you were doing no. a deep dive and that, I mean what are the chances I've never heard I, anyone say that that's that's what's so amazing about it she says she never eats them so how would I have known she only she only ate them because maybe she it, maybe it was like humanizing athletes favorite cereal uh, and you read that and it's. Nah. No, I thought good. it was great. Where'd you get the shirt, by the way? Uh, that's a one of one, similar to Jack oh. I, I couldn't find one anywhere. That's why I also got a little bit nervous there. Oh my god! Uh, she was like, "Oh, did he get it from my merch store?" No, he <laughs> that doesn't exist. Store. Was it Redbubble or whatever it's called? No, no, no. I, I, I made Shout the design. You made the design. Made the design and then got it on a custom, locally printed one. I, I've tried to use like a maybe like a custom ink, and they denied me for copyright infringement, so I had to go local. Really? Yeah. They didn't. Who Oof. would deny you? Custom Inc. Oh, I thought I didn't know that was the action, actual name of the place. Yeah. Uh, wow. I figured those places just take everyone's money. That's usually that's what the local places do. Oh, so. uh, okay. Wow. Okay. Well, I hope you. I mean, I apologize if you felt that way. I was just well, the, to uh, love. There's not a lot of hardcore Mino Fioro fans out there right now. You. Can I am say, one of them. I'm leading the charge. And you bet on her, right? Of course, I bet. I bet on her as soon as the the line came out. Yeah. I'm just going to bet on her against anyone until she loses. Good result for the UFC. Caitlin Jukagian's in a tough spot. Reminds me a lot of John Fitch, Yushin Okami back in the day, where she lost to the champ. Not super, you know, popular, but so good and such a tough out and a frustrating fighter that if you keep putting top contenders against her, she's going to keep knocking them off. And then it's going to be hard to, you know, give her another title shot, right? So... Uh, this was a big, big result for them. Do you agree, by the way, with that? Do you agree with going with Grasso versus her next, or do you want to see her fight for the belt right away? No, I don't mind the Grasso. I, I think both of them I think are... that'd be a great striking fight, right? Yeah, yeah. especially if... I, I wonder if it would be five rounds. It would probably be be three on a pay-per-view, but I'm down with that. Do it in France. Do it in Mexico. France. Do it in Mexico. Winner gets gets the, the next shot at the belt. Man. Reese's, Reese's Puffs, and it was a limited edition. And what was the hype beast thing that you mentioned? 
Oh, she's just into the shoes. Like she was oh, rocking yeah, the yeah. Gucci North Face bucket hat, six fifty. By the way, pretty. Well, oh, you know, you know, there. I wasn't sure if it was a knockoff or not. That's why I didn't say Gucci in the question. Mm-hmm. It was Gucci. No. It's definitely yeah. No, no, no. They did like a collab. What do you mean they did a collab? Gucci and North Face. Oh, they, that was a Gucci North Face. Yes, Gucci North Face. God. I mean, it said it I'm all over so, it. I I didn't look that closely. I just thought it was a cool hat. No, yeah, she got the real thing. Dang. All right. The shoes too. Jordan one shout out. Got a pair myself. Yeah, we we'll see. Each other. <laughs> Do you have the Gucci hat? <laughs> no, but now I'm I'm on their website. I might get it now. Is it six fifty? Six fifty. American? Uh, or Euro? Yes. No, American. Probably more in Euro. Maybe less. How's the dollar doing? I'm not sure. Not great, I don't think. Yeah. Well, that was fun. It was fun to see you uh, cash that one. You see, that was one that I was. You see, because you were so emotionally invested. I chose to watch that over the broadcast when I could only, that was oh, earlier perfect. in the day. You, you saw the beret, the croissants. Oh, it was great. It was great. Where'd you get it from? Uh, your favorite place, Le Pont. Oh, downstairs? Yeah. I like the way you pronounce that. Uh, well, yeah, you know, I work, I study a little bit of French. Uh, Manon et Yo, oh. le oh. prochain champion. Wow. You believe that? Oui. Or you just wanted to say it? Oui. Oui. <laughs> For those that don't know, he said, she's the next champion. I kind of wanted to tell Aldrich, hey, Aldrich, I got this. You know, I could take it from I here. I wish you had. I wish you had. That would have been, been fantastic fun. stuff. It would have been very Karen Bryant of me. She used to do interviews with the Brazilian fighters and translate for them. It was very impressive. Anyway, someone else who thinks that they're going to be a champion in the not too distant future is our next guest. He is just 22 years young. I believe the fourth youngest fighter on the roster, had another win on Saturday, his third in the UFC, still undefeated, gets the big submission win over Malcolm Gordon. He's the pride of Dagestan and Manchester. He's our old friend, Mohammed Mokhaev, who is joining us from Bahrain. Hello, Mohammed. Salam alaikum, my friend. Alaikum. How are you, Arin? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine. I just like, I'm, I'm in Bahrain right now. Uh, Prince of Bahrain invited me for the event in Bahrain Brave CF. Came as a guest. Must be nice. Get a nice little invitation from the Prince of Bahrain. Good accommodations there for you? Oh, good. <laughs> for me, accommodation doesn't matter for me. Like, uh, it's, it's my people. I'm not like a, like a guest, but I'm, I'm, I'm here to support my people. Give them support back too. What was it like to fight uh, in the UAE again? Uh, did you feel the love from the people? Was it an experience that you know? I'm sure you had dreamed of, and did it live up to what you were dreaming of? To be honest, it's like one of the best places, like best best place I ever been. You know, like an arena wise, like it was crazy support. It was like uh, from Kazakhstan people, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Russia, United Kingdom. A lot of people travel to for this event. It's crazy. Because no need visa for Abu Dhabi, right? So right. Everyone is traveling there. Uh, did you feel uh, possible? I don't know. You tell me more love there than you did when you fought in England the last two times. Hard to say because each fight I'm growing. Yeah. Like my fan base growing, so I cannot say like UK fans were louder than Hawaii or Hawaii like uh, Middle East is, is. I have like it's just amount of support is grows uh, each fight. Do you feel a big difference in that? You know, they always talk about the octagon jitters. Your first one was super short. The second one goes long. Now, like, do you feel like now you're a veteran? Uh, and it's crazy to say you're you're 22, but like, do you feel so much more? This is my house. I'm used to this. I've been through the whole experience. Dramatically different from you know March or even July. Yes, I mean, this is my like third fight in six months, six seven months, right? And. Um... Like I'm, I'm staying back to back training every day. When I go inside the cage, I, I, it's, it's, it's like a sparring day for me. So I train all week. If you look my episodes on YouTube, I start creating now. Like on the fight week, morning and night, I training. I like sparring. I have like just normal week for me. And Saturday is just like a sparring day, and Friday is is a weight cut day. So I mean Thursday. So it's it's normal week for me. Like normal fight week. I thought it was interesting you said uh, you maybe kind of underestimated him a little bit. And, um, you know, you, you said that in the post-fight interview. So what were you expecting and what were you surprised by? To be honest, I really, if you realize when I, when I took him down on the ground, uh, 
I, I, I went to I want to finish him too fast with guillotine and they found out my game. That was was the game to finish him. And in the in interview, I said I'm gonna finish him in first round by submission. So he was like he was more defensive. And then when when he fought, I got tired in third round, and he he was worried about like triangle and 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 guillotine defense. He forgot about Amba, mm. which he's good at. So I caught him with the arm. So it's okay. Uh, did you feel like all the time, you know, you were such a massive favorite and, and even you were talking about finishing him or whatnot. Is that added pressure? Like, is, is there, is it necessary to put that pressure on yourself? Cause I feel like you say it and then people are like, Oh, you got to go out and do it. And if you don't do it, even though you win 30 to 27, all of a sudden people are like, ah, you didn't live up to what you were saying. Right. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe don't put that pressure on yourself. I don't, I don't like what pressure have you seen when, have you seen me when I walk out to the cage? Like I remember for my debut, my coaches were worried like you, you off your concentration when you like see the fans. I'm like, listen, I enjoy this moment, I love this moment, and uh, like I believe, I believe if I fight again, Michael Malcolm Gordon, I, I probably finish him in first round. Mm. You know what I mean? So there's there's nothing like I took it to third round. I had to work out. Sometimes I give my back because I see like ten seconds left. Left, okay, I'll give him because I was confident. Nobody will finish me, you know, like, especially, I don't care. Like, I give my back to Black Belt, and he couldn't finish me. Mm. So, I feel cool, you know. It, it, and uh, I love the atmosphere. When I walk out, it gives me, like, crazy energy. I, I know this is a weird question to someone who is so dominant, but did you feel like you needed the finish after the last fight so that people can't say, uh, you know, boring, this, that? You you know, you hear the, the, the naysayers. Did you feel like you needed that to shut them up? No. I could finish him. I could finish as decision. What whatever they say, when I'm one step closer to my dream. And I remember I said this: I'm gonna be most active fighter, take the belt, and uh, I'm very very close to my goal. I believe I'm like one fight from like maybe interim belt. I want to fight straight away, like top ten guys. If people think I'm a boring fighter, I'm not deserve top ten guys. Who deserves them? Show me who deserves. Like I'm most active flyweight on the roster and I agree to fight anyone in division. I don't pick and choose opponents and Malcolm Gordon was two fight win streak. You know what I mean? So if it was up to you, who would be next? Like uh, Royval, I called him out but now he got Amir Albazi. So right. winner of these guys, I want to fight or loser of these guys, I want to fight in UK. I don't care. Like they're, they're all, both in top 10. So I believe it's like 50 55, but I think I think Amir a little bit uh, uh, got chance to wrestle, but I, I want to see Amir wrestle against me <laughs> in 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 UK. I love the idea of you versus Jeff Molina. I, I can bet, like I don't bet, but I can like tell you, like he no, he doesn't want to fight with me because. After my fight in UK, I came to make matchmaker of UC downstairs in the lobby, and there was Jeff Malin's manager next next to him. And I said, "Let's fight in Abu Dhabi." And he says, "No, no, he's not. He don't want. He don't want to fight in Abu Dhabi. How does he know what Jeff Malin wants? Mm -hmm. Manager doesn't want. But Jeff Malin doesn't want to, and he's got the match up. But I think this will be easiest guy in top fifteen, Jeff Malina. Easiest guy. We both young. Jeff Malina. Easiest. Yes." He will be easy or easiest opponent for me out of all my career because he's young. Last my opponent was like 32, 31 years old. And I will show what I can do with people the same age as me if I dominate people like 10 years older than me. So you think one more fight and you're in the title picture? Very close. I'm one more fight, I will be top top like six. Yeah. And 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 so you'll you'll be very close to beating that record, right? Of of John Jones' youngest champion. You've wanted 100%. this, and you think the UFC. Do you believe this? Do you believe this, Aaron? Do I believe what? Do you believe I will fight for the belt next year? I think you can, yeah. Especially at how active you are. I think if you get uh, one more, it could be tough. Only because the the title fight is January, so that's still like three yeah. months away. And then you would think the winner would be ready to fight. I don't know, May or something, right? So I th end of next year, right? End of 2023 is possible. And when do you turn 2023? Yes. I'm, 20, 20, I'm 
23 in July next year. Okay. So I, I've got I've got till 2024 end of the March. So I, I will be ahead of my goal. Golly, end of March is is of 2024 is the deadline. Yes, maybe oh I fight. God. Maybe I defend the belt in UK. Yeah. You might you might win the belt and defend the title. Uh, there there is talk of uh, April, March, something like that for the Leon. Uh, you know, title defense in the UK is March. that what, March 18th. I heard. Yeah. Okay, is that what you want? Yes. To be back on that card. Yes. Okay. Maybe uh, in a stadium or something like that. What are you hearing? Yes, eighty-three thousand uh, capacity in Cardiff, something like this. That's what I heard. Oh, that'd be incredible. Crazy. I know it's like four times bigger arena than I fought in last three fights. Unbelievable. So for you, do you feel like uh, you feel like you've improved a lot this year? Like, are you are you happy with the progression of your career from when you debuted in March till now? I really, I, I will say you something. Um, I can say this because all my team seen this like ten days before the fight. I had crazy temperature. I spoke to my manager team, and he said we can ask maybe to do catch weight with uh, with this fight for Abu Dhabi, or we might be pulled out. I said, listen, please. No, I went to doctors, uh, I take antibiotic, I came to the fight. My concentration level went down because of of the antibiotics. If somebody uses antibiotics and, and like go to training, they will understand what I'm talking about. But I, I don't need to say this because I've been this I had this in the past in my career and I went through that's why I believe in my head I can go there with fifty percent even of my who I am performance and I beat these guys. Like beat anybody in this top 15 guys and I went there that's, that wasn't my 100% performance like I don't know if I don't know yeah yeah so you were you were very sick what was wrong I was sick even like even you, you've seen nutritionist uh, Nicole I was told I told her well, I, I take antibiotics will it hold my water and stuff like this I was worried about weight oh. more than more than fight wow and I asked I said to my manager, uh, Tim, I said, Tim, I'm still going to make flyweight because people going to say he 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 only did two fights at flyweight, so it will be a waste of the waste of the, my like end of the year. So I w- will make weight. Okay. And uh, and how was the weight cut for you? It was difficult only because antibiotics was holding the water. Yeah, okay. And how did you feel on fight night? <sighs> I didn't put much weight on, really. If you compare pictures between me and Charles Johnson, when I fought Charles Johnson, how big I was, and for this fight, I wasn't. I wasn't same, but it's okay. It's okay. I, I showed I can go there, and I have B plan. Okay, yeah. and you didn't sit down between rounds. That's my fifty percent performance. Yeah, very impressive. Yes. Very, very impressive. By the way, um, there's always going to be comparisons between you and Habib because you're both from Dagestan. I know he was there. The whole team was there. Did you see him at all? Did you talk to him at all? Any interactions with him and the team? Yes, he wished us luck and he congratulated us after the fight. We cut weight together in the same room. There was Zubaira to hug off his arm and, uh, and all the guys. But yeah, everything's good. I had Rustam Habilov in my corner. It's an original suplex machine. Everything like, like uh, everyone helped each other, and uh, it was amazing, amazing event to be honest. I really love, I love every every day. I enjoyed. Nice, yeah. Uh, obviously, we saw uh, Nurmagomedov team and Hamza get into a thing, but then the next day we see them friends. So there's a lot of love in the air over there. Yes, you know where I means anything happens. So only thing I don't like is. Uh, doing this on the on the public but anything can happen maybe it happens to me tomorrow i don't know and uh, and then i feel bad when i come back home and try not repeat the same mistake right and if this happen, can happen to anyone so where are means where are means people doing worse stuff yeah this is nothing by the way they have they have cheesecake factory in bahrain yes i'm a cheesecake factory. wow i didn't know they had that over yeah. there is it you get the cheesecake yeah. No, I eat only pasta. I want to stay fit. Nothing? You don't even indulge a little bit after a win like that? After, to, to be honest, I read after victory, like before the fight, you want to eat everything. But after victory, you just want to enjoy the moment. 
Fair enough. Well, enjoy the moment, my friend. Thank you for doing this. I'll let you get back to your dinner. I appreciate it. Uh, congratulations. And I look forward to the next one for you. Yes. Thank you. Shout out to, to my team, KHK, and my management paradigm, Twins Brothers, for supporting me. We have the strongest team in the world. Inshallah. Thank you. Take care. There yes, he is. Salam alaikum to uh, Mohammed Mokhayev. There's all kinds of things falling down here. Yeah, we have Joe I coming in to just double what check. What is going on? Cables. My mic was coming. Well, no, I don't think you need to do that. You don't need to do it, Joe. Can I mean, it's just can here. You do it? No, it's like right here. What am I going to do? Just push it in. Yeah, it's fine. Why? Did you hear that? Or oh, did yeah, you see? several times. So yeah, yeah, are it's you fine. Just, are you feeling all right? I mean, look, um, everything was working fine on Wednesday. Did you guys move things around on... Uh, this is low-hanging fruit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just everything was working fine. Uh, great stuff, great stuff. Oh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, here's uh, New York Rick letting me know. The deadline is March 28th, 2024. Coincidentally, my wife's birthday. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Uh, March 28th, 2024. It's currently October 24th, 2022. The guy's got... I mean, I could do the math. 24 months would be two years minus... Seven, so 24 minus seven is 17. He's got 17 months to make this happen. I feel like he's got a great chance. If you look at the rankings right now, he's not in the top 15, but I feel like he's going to go into the top 15 after this one. And it's just going to be a matter of if the UFC wants to make this happen, if they want to keep him active, if they want to make this happen, if they want to try to make some history. Um... Forgot to send. Uh... And what an interesting little nugget that was about Principality Stadium in Cardiff, because there's been some talk. Is it going to be at Wembley? Is it going to be at uh, Tottenham Stadium? Uh, Principality Stadium in Cardiff, Wales. Coincidentally, I was there last month. I don't know if you guys know this. I was there for uh, WWE Clash at the Castle. And I said, that's the spot. It's got a roof. It's in a great part of of the the country it's like right in the middle of the town uh there's castles everywhere they've they've hosted big events tyson fury of course uh march 18th it's a little cold you need a roof um leon was there got the big pop being at the wwe event front row uh, perhaps that's going to be the site of maybe the biggest attended event highest attended event in ufc history wouldn't that be something? Leon Edwards defending his title for the third time. Not third time. Uh, Leon Edwards fighting Kamaru Usman for the third time, defending his title for the first time. Uh, that would be huge. Leon was in Abu Dhabi. He's got an aura about him now. Feels like he's the champion. Looks like he's the champion. There's just something, there's a, there's a different demeanor there. Uh, and that is cool to see. So... Uh, they could do, I mean, they could do a whole UK versus the world card. As we said, they did announce last week that Patty Pimblett is going to be fighting Jared Gordon on the December 10th card. Like that fight, appropriate fight. There were talks of them fighting before his last fight. Jared Gordon is a tough out. He's a really tough out. He's been there, done that. He's not, you know, he's not new to the UFC scene. He's had some, some big wins. Solid fight. And then I'm guessing if Patty wins, he'd be on that March card, or even if he loses, to be honest. But uh, I'm, I'm excited for that fight. It was interesting the way they, uh, they were talking about the 282 card. They said that's not exactly the bout order, but it did say Prochaska versus Teixeira 2. Now they could easily change that. But I've heard, I mean, there's, there's nothing right now in terms of... Nganu, Jones, Jones, Miacic, nothing going on on that front. Could it happen? Did they need to come back from Abu Dhabi to get it done this week? One would think, but I've, I've, I've heard nothing. I've really heard nothing. And those involved have heard nothing, which leads me to believe that they might just go with Prochaska versus Teixeira too. Not a bad main event at all. I mean, it headlined it, it headlined an, an event in uh, Singapore back in June. But I, I would love to know why. I wish someone would have asked. I would have loved to know why. 
What's going on with John? Are they trying to get John? What's the holdup? What's going on with Francis? Are you talking to Francis now that he's not represented by CA anymore? Is there a better chance that he will resign? What's happening? We'll wait and see. Um, I am looking forward to talking to our next guest. His name is Cheeto Vera. Um, he is one of the best bantamweights on the planet. I thought it was interesting. Aljamain didn't talk all that much about him, but I, I feel like, look, I, I was trying to think about it over the weekend. There's many different permutations. I understand why the UFC would be open to the Cejudo fight. And I, and I think Cejudo deserves it. If there's one thing I would love and, you know, can't get into all of it with Aljo, I was trying to tell him, like, stop reading the comments so much just for his own mental health, for his own sanity. I wish that they would stop with the names, the Sadudu, the Cheetos, the Sugar Tits. I don't love that. I, I don't love um, Cejudo. Like, why do we have to do this whole thing with the names? It feels very kid-like, right? I mean, I, I just feel like we don't, it's not the, I don't know. It's not, like, take a look at Cejudo's video. This is Cejudo after the win on Saturday talking about Al Jermaine Sterling. Do we have this video? Well, congratulations, Al shit Stang. You continue to it? keep beating my leftovers. What congratulations. I took that dude out in 32 seconds. Anyhow, the baby, my puppy is right here, dude. Let's not forgive him. All you guys are babysitting my belt. All you sorry as 135 pounder. There's one king, and his name is Triple C. You're going to get it. Sign the contract, ho. Okay, so there's so much there. And Aljo was talking about the word cringe. He kind of introduced the word cringe uh, to the sport Henry did. There's so much there. Why do you have to use the name? I know I get Aljo did it, but like the names are so whack. They're so whack. Also, you know what really grinds my gears? Probably the thing that grinds my gears the most. You know what really grinds my gears? What's that? When people say sign the contract. There is no contract. What are you talking about? There's actually no contract. Do you think the UFC has issued a contract? First of all, he 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 did this seconds after the fight. You think the UFC sent him a contract before the fight? No. Do you think the UFC is issuing contracts seconds after the fight? No. What are you talking about? Say, hey, take the fight. I'm coming back. Yes, I retired, but I'm back. You know, the six month period, the testing pool period, that's that's done with. I'm good to go. All this stuff. The name, the hoe, the contract. Henry, you're better than all of this. Remember, when I was helping you out, you were on fire. I mean, you were rubbing elbows with the Bella Twins. Don't forget this. Now it's like these weirdo names that he comes up with. And the sign the contract. They say this all the time. Sign the contract. There is no contract. Come on. We have to be particular about this. We have to be correct. We have to be factually accurate there is no contract okay so stop it with that i understand i thought it was really interesting how dana brought it up and he also joked about the fact like oh people are going to twist this no he said what do you think about the cejudo fight that tells me that he's interested in it right he doesn't just throw out names if he's not interested in that particular matchup that tells me that he's leaning towards cejudo and then does that mean we're getting o'malley cheeto too are they going to go back and say o'malley's going to get it where does cheeto fit into all of this well the good news is we get to hear from Mr. Cheeto Vera, who has been in the news in many different, you know, capacities over the past week or so. He's kind enough to join us right now on the program. There he is. Marlon, my man. How are you? Blessed, happy, healthy. It's a beautiful time. Difference. Good, 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 good to beautiful. hear. Yeah, beautiful day outside. It's a beautiful time to be alive. It's always a beautiful day around here. Yes, it is. You are a lucky man. Uh, Cheeto, there's a lot to talk to you about. You're very much in the mix here. Uh, first of all, can I ask you, what did you think of the Aljamain Sterling TJ Dillashaw fight this past Saturday? You know, it was a great fight. Uh, nothing taken away from Aljamain. You know, he won fair and square. Uh, TJ seems like he came injured, but the guy came to fight. You know, if he were to pull it off, he would be a hero by now, but. Shit happens. His his his, his, uh, his uh, shoulder came off, and you know, sad for him. But the champion keep the bell, so good for him. So you take nothing away from the champion. Uh, I I agree with you. Some people want to say, ah, oh, easy. He got lucky. This and that. You're not one of those people. Well, most of the, those people will never accomplish and have never accomplished anything. So 
it's easy for people like that to hate. For us, you know, the ones that are actually doing something in life, it is what it is. A win is a win, a loss is a loss, and fuck it. You better be in the good side of that of that sore and and all you mean won the belt. Fair and square, you know. If your shoulder came out, if your nose came out, if your hair came out, who you know, who the fuck cares, you know? He won the fight, period. It's part of the game. Now, what about the O'Malley Yan fight? Could I ask who did you score it for? Who do you think won? When the fight was over, uh in my opinion, I got a lot of people have three three oh to Yan. I got two one to Yan. Um the body language of O'Malley was, you know, a body language of like, you know, I lost the fight and then when they gave it to him, I thought they it was a gift decision, but again, fuck it, you know. The guy won the fight. You know, now he's gonna have a number one next to his number, I guess. But I believe it was a gift. I believe uh, he got he got the decision gifted. But we'll see what happened with that. You know, it was a it was it was a close fight. You know, both guys hurt each other, and I think everything come down to the takedowns and, and and the and the control time, but. You know, it was. I I feel it was a similar fight to my fight with Sonia Don, if you ask me, my my my, my personal opinion. So, uh, and I'm just curious. Uh, did he surprise you? Did O'Malley surprise you? Did he do, regardless of if he won or not? Did he do better than you thought he would? Um, I think I think for again for all the people that say that he sucks and he's just all talk, I never thought that. I always said it before. The guy can fight. The guy is talented. The guy have his tools. I think he's the only one. He's the actually surprised one that he can prove his himself to everybody because I actually think he can fight. I actually think he got power on his, on his hands. I think he's he's kind of slick, but you know, so the so, so the rest of the division, so the rest of the top fifteen. You know, at that level, anybody can hang with anybody. You know, he and their couple, couple, couple guys will stop other guys, but the level up there is pretty much the same. It's who prepared the better. Who did enough reps? Who 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 put more time into it, and who just stayed longer and didn't play catch up? So, the guy can fight, but again, sort of the rest of the whole division. Who should fight Aljamain Sterling next? I'm a selfish I'm a selfish prick, so I will say myself. Do you think you'll get it? But, um, maybe. I'm again. Uh, I said it before this fight. The that decision is up to Dana White and the UFC. You know. That that we can we can say whatever we want. I can go crazy online. I can waste all my energy, but that's up to the UFC. I think they're the ones that will decide that. They're the ones who will pick the the next title contender. I'm ready though. If they call me, I happily do it. If they call me for number one contender, I'm also happily doing it. So I'm not tripping. I'm in great spirits. Uh, I'm just keep getting better. I'm using all this meantime to improve keep working and by the time they call me I'll be just ready to put another performance put another man out and I'm not chasing nothing I'm not going after anything the main goal is the belt but in order to get the belt you gotta win and that's what I've been doing which direction do you think they're leaning towards? Um, as a fight fan you know Anybody who beat number one contender should fight for the belt, right? Mm-hmm. That's obvious, right? Miley doesn't matter what ranking he is. He beat number one, he should fight for the belt. But the whole, everybody thinks that was a gifted uh, decision. Everybody thinks he got a little, uh, he got a, a pass by in that one. So that can probably hurt what the UFC will do with with him. It's the same thing that happened with the, with the Sonja Don fight. I got robbed, they give me the Miley fight. Then they give me the Aldo fight. I advanced after a loss. So O'Malley got the decision gifted. Maybe they they, they they do the same thing. They probably hold him a little bit, um, make somebody else do it. But we'll see. Again, that's up to Dana and the UFC. We'll see what they want to do. Whatever we say is just an opinion. So it's just, it's just what we think that can happen. How would you feel, you know, because we were talking about this like bantamweight Grand Prix, that's the way I was calling it because all these fights were happening, your fight and then the, the the fights afterwards. How would you feel if the one guy who didn't fight in this Grand Prix, Henry Cejudo, gets the title shot? 
I will see that that fat fucking main white first, and you know he gotta go through the six months of Usada. But I think it's over the six uh, months. By the way, I think it's it's completed. It's over. Yeah. Well, good for him then. He's a he's a bantamweight champion. He's a flyweight champion. He got the Olympic medal, so he got he got more than most of us. So if he get a shot, you know, good for him. I'm young enough that they can go for it. I'm not, you know, I'm not in. I'm not. I'm not trying to sprint. I'm not. I'm not trying. I'm not desperately trying to get the belt. That's why I'm gonna get it. Just because I just keep getting better. I know that's the main thing for me. That's my main goal in life right now. But there's so many little puzzles I'm I'm not gonna be able to control and that's why I just put my energy in things I can't control like just keep getting better mm. keep improving staying in, get in better shape figure it out how to run faster run longer you know lift heavy weights just wrestle more grapple more spar box get my boxing better my kicks better so you know that's a possibility too right now right now I don't think Sehuda can make weight but you know, if he put on time, you know he will he will he will he will, he will, he will slim down. But he's just he's just too small and too fat right now. I feel I'm not even talking shit. He's, those are facts. If you see him on the street, he's like a little round ball. <laughs> now, is is there any part? Tell me if I'm talking shit. <clears throat> no, I mean, listen. Uh, he, I haven't seen him in a while, so I can't really confirm. But uh, on camera, yes, it does seem like he's a little bit bigger. He's out of camp. He hasn't fought in two years, though, right? Almost three. Right, he retires though. Yeah, yeah. Nobody kicked him out. He he put himself out. Uh, I, I I think that it felt to me like Dana in the post fight press conference was leaning towards him because he brought up, oh, that could be a fun fight, and he doesn't usually do that unless he's leaning in that direction. I don't know if you saw those comments. He he also said before the fight, yeah, that the winner right. of a Miley Young will fight for the belt. On after the fight, he say he don't know. So. It's, it's just it's just a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, right now there's a couple clear contenders out there. It's more who they want to do it, how they want to do it. So, and those things we just don't know. We don't have those answers. And you know, I can go crazy online and kind of like raise a little smoke, but I rather just smoke it <laughs> rather than raise it. You know, I don't. I'm not. I'm not really wasting energy in that, and and I think I really believe me and the UFC are cool. I think they're gonna they're gonna do the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's not for the belt, they will give me the right fight, the number one contender, and and, and we'll see what happens. If if Aljo fights someone else, who's the appropriate number one contender fight for you, in your opinion? What do you think? Well, Corey been calling me out, and then they offer us to fight November fifth because the main event got. Uh, something happened in that many men and he didn't accept the fight. So why you fucking call me out, Corey Sanhai? And then you're like, I don't know, you don't have time to make weight or get ready, but wow. don't call another man now and then don't be able to dance. And those are facts. I was doing commentary and then my manager bugged my shoulders. Like He told me the offer and it was a sexy offer because it was a short notice and I was like, fuck yeah. I'm ready. Let's go. That's that's clearly number one contender. And then my guy Corey, you know, I don't know what happened. Maybe something's going on in his life. Who knows, right? I cannot talk for a guy I don't know, but just don't fucking call me out if you don't want to take it. Wow, so I will just leave it like that. Is that who you were referring to last week when you said, you know, you call me out and you don't take the fight? I I, uh, I think I texted you about that, but um, I was wondering who That you, was him. That was him, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, sometimes I don't need to, to throw names. They just know who, <laughs> who I'm talking about. Yeah. And, and and so but since I'm talking to you, I'm giving you the I appreciate it. The main news because you're you're my guy. I appreciate that. Does that mean that you'll be fighting him at a later date? Do you think he'll be the guy who's next for you? Well, I put it like this, you know. I'm the one taking the fight. I'm the one that is winning these main event fights. I'm the one that we've been putting out the former champions. I was I got offered to fight Jan. I was 13 in Boston. He declined. Then Dominic step up. Corey declined. That's just clearly your number one contender right there. Mm. I got offered a mile in the past. In my eyes, in my mind, I'm clearly number one contender. But again, 
I'm not tripping. If they go some other route, I will see. I'm not. I, I I'm the type of guy that I called out everybody, but right now, I don't know who's number one contender. If you're not, if you're not giving me the bill right now, give me number one contender. Uh, it seems you know. I just had Aljo on earlier, and he was running down the list, and he didn't mention you. And I was like, what about Cheeto? And uh, it wasn't like a very sort of decisive answer that he gave me, and it made me wonder if maybe he just forgot or. He's not interested. I don't know. Do you think he's interested in fighting you? He called me out right after the fight. Yeah. Well, just put it like that. He was talking much shit about TJ, right? About EPO and drugs and blah, blah, blah. And then after the fight, he's like, I respect you, blah, blah, blah. Like, almost like sucking his dick. So, <laughs> like, who are you? Is it, you? is it you a real? Is it your mean guy? Or you're like nice and mean? Like, just pick, pick a side, you know? I just keep it real. I say my thoughts about you. I say what I want to do to you. But after the fight, I'm not either trying to be your best friend, but also I'm not pulling you down. Right. Win, loss, or draw. You can see, you can you can see since the since the beginning of my career, I'm I just keep it real. You know, the guy called me out. The guy tweeted me directly on Saturday night. You know, is it gonna be hard to forget? He just probably. I guess he's a weird guy. He have no personality. He's dry as tomato. Can't crack a joke. So he's probably trying to be too cool for his own. But again, I don't give a fuck. If we see Charlie one day, I make sure he will remember. I hate the Cheeto stuff. I hate all that stuff. It really bothers me. <laughs> I don't mind it. It's an, what are we in the fifth grade here? What is going on? I know, but the guy's a cook. <laughs> have no friends. Always, always walk along. You know what I'm saying? The guy has no personality, but. It is what it is. I just he's think he doesn't a, need to do it. Rapper, he's though. the champ. He's the champ. I think he. I wish he wouldn't resort to that. That's all. I know, but when you has when you have no personality, you gotta do something like that, right? So, you know, you you just can't crack a joke for your own self, and then you just again he got the bell. He sounds salty. That's that that's the that's the sad part about the guy. You know, you got the bell. Like put it like that. Look how okay with myself I am, how happy and confident I am. I'm not even number one contender. I don't even have a number one next to me. I don't even have the belt. It's just because you're in a good place in life. Hmm. Maybe the guy's not. Uh, do you respect him as champion? Do you think he's the best guy in the division right now? He got the belt. Right. Simple as that. He got the belt. He's, he, he's, he's big for the division. He got good, good grappling on. A lot of people talk shit on his striking, but you know the guy. The guy is still throwing everything he he have, right? Right. He throws a lot of kicks. He throws, he throws all that kind of shit. So, his striking probably is not what Adesanya brings to the table, but it's definitely he can strike. So, I think that's why people sometimes sleep on people like that because they look kind of goofy and shit, but they still trying to kick your head off. So, that's a good thing about me. I keep it real. I, I know most of these guys are dangerous, if not all of them are. So I'll be ready for him or for whoever else comes my way. But if you ask me, I can guarantee anybody I will be the, the UFC Bantam win champion. Like this time next year? Like any time. Mm. This year, next year, whenever the UFC want to make it. Because the amount of work I put into this and the evolution I've been I've been seeing on myself, you know, it, it, just, it, it just doesn't come by just wishing or thinking about it. I do put in work every fucking day. I'm not, I'm not wasting no time. I'm on my prime, and these next six to seven years are like the best years of my life. So I'm not wasting them. I'm not fucking around. I'm not trying to go out at night and you know do, do crazy shit. I will do that later when I retire after all the good things happen to me when I when I basically earn it now I'm all gas all in and I really believe I'm going to make it happen brother what's going on are you on a swing right now this is a great setup that you have here what is this I love this swing this is <laughs> this is this, is, the, this oh. is my favorite swing wow that's great you just sit and there your I kids just, play yeah we just sit here and sometimes we just sit here and just 
just just smile just like just have a conversation with my wife the kids sit here it's it's a big swing so sometimes the five of us and the dog just laying in here for an hour and just just be i like it it's a it's a it's a it's a good place to be you know it's a you know there's a bunch of trees around i have a bunch of cactuses around and a couple fruit trees avocado papaya lemon orange wow and it's just all green it's all green around here and i love it wow what a life you can reflect on all you've done uh you're you're, you're clearly in a great spot can i ask you though um not to go from a positive to a negative what about Peter Jan last week? I think you were upset with some of his comments. Uh, do you want to do you want to clear the air? Well, it's just as simple as he was acting like he took the fight, and I didn't want to wait a week. I'm like, when Sean Shelby called me, I was finishing training, and this is like eight weeks before August 13th. And he's like, "Hey, you and John in Boston," and I was like, "Sure." I, me and Parillo were excited. We're like, fuck yeah, let's do it. That's the number one contender spot. Then the fucking fat bastard were in Italy just slamming pizzas over and over. And, you know, you can tell his face is chubby, his belly is, you know, his guts are a little fucking fluffy and shit. And the guy was like, no, wanna f- let's win in October in Abu Dhabi. And I was like, I ain't waiting for October. I ain't waiting for you. Fuck you. Like, you ain't, you ain't not, I'm not waiting for a Norman. Fuck you. And then the guy was basically saying that he accepted to fight in September. And he didn't accept to fight in September. There's no card. There's no openings in September. The UFC offer August 13 or Abu Dhabi. I'm like, I don't want to put a fight in. I don't want to wait three more, four more months. I actually want to try to fight by December. I was thinking back then, I was like, if I fight in August 13, I'm going to be able to fight by by December, you know, anything can happen for the bill. I can, I, I can be the the guy waiting in line if somebody gets hurt, somebody gets uh, injured, and that's it. So, I'm, I really, I'm not into lying. I'm like, if you know, it is what it is. I, even if it's my fault, I just accept. I'm like, you know what? I wasn't ready, I declined, blah, 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 whatever, you know. Mm. I just like, I, I will just keep it real at, at all costs. And now he's acting all tough. I'm like, right before the Miley fight that, that I didn't want to fight him, or I didn't accept, I want to wait two weeks. I'm like, dude, focus on your fight. You have another guy in front of you. Forget about me. See? He lost the fight. He didn't lose because of that. But I'm like, those little inches of energy, just put in your opponent. Don't don't be thinking about me. Like, when I, when, when I fought Cruz, or when I fought Frank, or when I fought Fon, I wasn't talking about anyone else. I don't look past them. I'm not making plans past them. I just think about them. Is them or nothing? Because that's what I have in front of me. Fighting is too fucked up to be thinking about too much. It's just focus on one thing. And that pretty much is whatever you have in front of you. Uh, when, when do you think you'll fight again? Or when do you want to fight again? Um, fuck, any time. What? Do you have, feel, do you um, have something and you're not telling me right now? No, I would tell you. And if, if it's something I couldn't tell you, I would tell you, tell by, you. <laughs> by message, maybe. Uh, but no, I don't... I don't Are you going to fight this year? They, they, I don't think so. Oh, you were going to say something. I cut you off there. What were you going to say? They something? Uh, well, no, I would say I, I wouldn't tell you. If I yeah, yeah. You. I, I would say they offered me the, the somehow and fight November 5th. That definitely fell through. Yeah. But besides that, I'm like, there's nothing else available. Maybe, maybe, maybe Aljamain will remember me and we'll fight in some, sometime in February. Oh, that'd be nice. If you remember me, no. And maybe he won't remember me. <laughs> wow. Cheeto number one <laughs> contender? You wrote it. I saw it on your Instagram. You wrote number one contender. I am. I don't know if that was a mindset be... or they've told you this. No, it's a mindset. Okay. It's, it's, it's a mentality. I like I've it. been number one contender for a minute now. Right, right, right. Especially if you plan to fight you, that should be like a win over them automatically. Interesting. Okay. You know? Yeah. If somebody offer you a fight and they decline it, look, if they hurt, that's fine. Yeah. When they offered me San Hagen the first time, I think he was hurt. That was in February this year, at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And he he was like, he, he was hurt, I believe. And then I fought the phone in April. 
the MF4 Cruz, Jan decline. So that's fuck. I, I basically beat the whole top yeah. five already. Right? <laughs> I like that you said Boston, you, by the way. Thank you for saying Boston because I got some people who said I was, you know. I was so excited to be a main event in Boston. Mm. That's like, I don't want to, that's like a, like a similar energy than MSG. I don't know why. I've never been there. Oh. I've never been there. And I just feel it's almost like MSG. It's like a, it's like a version of MSG that Boston are in. The TD yeah, Garden. Legendary. It is, right? So I'm right. And when they offer me, I'm like, fuck, me and Jan in Boston, I'm like, that's going to be epic. Biggest non-pay-per-view car of the year, live on the whole motherfucking SPM. I'm like, come on, let's do it. Then my guy was just fucking chopping yeah. pizza like motherfucker, but it's okay. Uh, by the way, it, yeah. it, this doesn't concern you, but just curious because you're an analyst and you have such a great mind for the sport. Uh, do you think Volkanovski could beat Islam? Well, we can only see, right, what's going to happen. Those fucking guys, they just grab you, they fucking tool you around. Yeah. Him and Khabib have that fucking... They're crazy. It's crazy to me. But I saw also earlier somebody ask, uh, I saw in, in two Jiu Jitsu guys' IGs, they asked the Mendes bros and they asked Gordon Ryan. They, you know when you put on IG that question thing? In yeah, the story yeah. And, everybody yeah. Yeah. and there was two similar questions. Like They asked, like, hey, is, is Sambo or the Russian style better than Jiu Jitsu? Or is just the Jiu Jitsu guys are not strong enough? And both guys make a good point. Like Gordon was saying, the Jiu Jitsu guys that are losing to the Sambo guys are decent Jiu Jitsu guys in MMA, are not real Jiu Jitsu guys in the world. And then I was thinking to myself, I'm like, that's true. No one, there's no Russian did that to Damian Maya. Right, right. right. I was like, there's, there's no Russian did that to Rani Jaya. Or, you know, like, I'm talking about, like, you guys that actually are, like, Jiu Jitsu, Jiu Jitsu guys. Or, like, even O'Malley's coach, Tanguinho, like, he lost before by KO or something, but he never got tooled around like that by a Russian. So I was like, maybe they're right, you know. Maybe mm. the guys that are losing in MMA, they're not, like, real, real Jiu-Jitsu guys, like, at the level of Marcelo Garcia or Demian Maya or, like, you know, the men, there's those guys like that. Maybe maybe people are going to train a little more jiu-jitsu or, or do it right. Who knows? But at the moment, those Russians seem pretty good. And the ball can also have, like, a very compact, strong. He might be able to, like, defend the techniques. Who knows, right? Right. He seems confident, though. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see it. Just a couple more things left for you. Um, what was it like meeting Mark Zuckerberg? Pretty cool guy. Down to earth, shake hands, smiles. He's a big fan of the sport. He was excited to be there. Um, you know, a lot of people have opinions about him. I don't know much because I don't I don't have I don't watch like regular TV or I don't read regular news. But to me it seems like a nice guy. Really cool guy. Told me he will come train one day when he have some time. Nice. Pretty nice guy. All right. Um, last nice guy. last year, I think the Vera family, you guys dressed up as uh, Scooby Doo for Halloween. What are we dressing up as uh, this Halloween next week? Can tell you, but the, uh, everything is in the garage. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna say it's gonna be a family. It's a it's a fun one. We always have a good one. We actually planned this outfit the day after Halloween. Oh God! Last year, a year. And in my advance? wife is. A, yeah, my where's my wife? She's around. I saw she's, her in the back. She's a fucking, I will. I haven't said nothing. She's already asking me. <laughs> she already fucking told me. I haven't said nothing. I said we will be a family. Okay. But she already ordered everything, and everything is in the garage, ready to go. Okay. All right. I don't want to get you in trouble. Um, I look forward to that. Can give you the new, can give you the, the the news for that one, but it's gonna be a cool one. It's okay. Be a cool one. Fair enough. You gave me the Sanhagen thing, so I'm getting a little greedy. And by the way, what was the you were hanging out? I saw that you were at uh, Action's concert recently, right? You were hanging out with Action. I mean, you two guys together, it's like, there's no more coolness left boy. in the world. What was it like going there? It's, being backstage with him is just epic. You know, the guy work out before, he's he's basically, it feels like a locker room in a fight. He warm up, do a workout, and goes and rap like a motherfucker. I love the guy. He's really inspirational. He works hard, nonstop. And he just work over and over and over. Like, 
uh, every time everybody sometimes is like, oh, I'm tired or I hear that. That motherfucker works every day. And he don't have to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He don't, he don't have to work like that. That's a cool part about it. So that's my guy. And it's just, I'm just lucky to have friends like that because they, they, they uplift you in, in a good way. They always have something good to say. And they're just cool all around motherfucker. I love the guy. Did you see his wrestling debut? It was epic. I was supposed I was supposed to go, but it was my 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 daughter's birthday the day after, and I was like, "Fuck, it's gonna be hard to tell my daughter I won't be able to be no, there." No. So I missed that one, but that was epic. And for a guy like that, that is just a huge, it's a huge win because I don't know if you see, he have like a picture when he was really really young with an afro, like having a lot of fun in one at like a wrestling event yeah, in Queens, yeah, yeah. and now he's there. So that's like the Cinderella story, you know what I'm saying? Like he's actually there. Like he made it in life. Like everything he worked, everything he he loved, he's doing it. And that to me is just epic. When I see somebody that I like, that I love succeed like that, it's just something that makes me happy, makes me want to succeed even more. Just like you. Everything that you you're doing in life is what you dreamed of. You love it. It's all coming together for you. 2023 going to be a big year for Cheeto. Going to get that title people, shot. People, I will. People like that get together for a reason, you know. It's just the stars connect us, you know. The uh, the lights came down and we just cross paths, and that's a that's a great thing about life. You just get to meet people that I believe you, and you know it's it's just cool all around. I and I, I love that because you, sometimes you just don't know, and then you just the next day you met somebody that is really really good for you and for everybody around you. You're the man. And I can't wait. Next week, you're going to look completely different. It's unbelievable. No one, no one's facial hair grows faster than you. No one's look changes more than you. You always keep us on our toes. It's an unbelievable thing. You're the man, Cheeto. Right. Thank you very much. Try, my brother. Great to have Thank you on, you. as always. Great to get your insight. Good luck in uh, whatever happens next. I'm sure it's going to be a big one. And I wish you the best. And happy early Halloween to you and the family. Appreciate it. Same to you, brother. All right. Talk to you soon. There he is. Marlon Vera. Cheeto Vera. The man. I mean, is is there enough coolness in the world left for the rest of the world when Marlon and Action Bronson get together? I don't know. I don't know if there's actually cool... Like, when they when those two mega powers come together, I don't know if there's actual coolness left. It's like they suck up all the coolness. You see them together, and you're like, I just want to hang out with those guys. They're just so cool. They're just so much cooler than you and I. And I, I say you and I, I don't mean anyone in particular. Frank's probably going to get all defensive now and all very sentimental. I mean, is he not the coolest? Definitely you, the coolest. And you know what's interesting about Cheeto? <clears throat> Some people say that they are happy. Some people say that they're content. Some people say that they're confident. Some people say that they're, you know, at peace in their life. But you don't actually believe them. When Cheeto says it, you actually believe him. Right? Like, doesn't it just come across that way when he says it? Guy's sitting on his uh, his swing outside, sun's beaming on him. He's got an avocado tree, for goodness sakes. If we had an avocado tree in our backyard, I, I don't, I mean, we already eat way too many avocados. My wife is really into avocados. Uh, if we had one, it would just be an avocado party day and night at our house. Anyway, I'm really curious to see <clears throat> how this whole story plays out. Interesting note there about November 5th, huh? I wonder uh, if they're just going to run that one back, that idea back at a later date, but uh, that's not that far away. I mean, he probably got that word, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. If it was when he was at the Apex, the Zuckerberg card, that was early October. They lost the main event for that November 5th. So now it's Marina Rodriguez against Amanda Lemos. Bit of a drop-off, right? I mean, with all due respect, Rodriguez Lemos... Sanhagen Cheeto, that might be like one of my favorite main events ever. Sanhagen Cheeto. So I wonder where they go. Do they go Cejudo Sterling? If they do Sanhagen Cheeto, what do we do with O'Malley? I'd love to see Marab Jan, Sanhagen Cheeto. I don't know. Doozy. Maybe the guys have a better idea. Um, all right. Thank you very much to Mr. Marlon Vera. In a moment, we'll check in with the guys. 
We'll recap the weekend a little more. We'll talk about all the big fights, all the big wins, all the future matchups to come. But first, guys, as you know, the NBA is back. Nick's looking good. I don't know if you guys paid attention this past week. Uh, fought hard. Big comeback loss. Overtime loss to the Grizzlies on the road. Massive win over the Pistons on Friday. You should beat those teams back tonight. So happy to see the Knicks thriving. Always very exciting when the NBA is back. And you can tip off the season with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers can make any $5 NBA money line bet and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. In addition to the usual bets, everyone can boost their winnings up to 100% with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. With payouts bigger than ever, DraftKings Sportsbook is the place to go to bet on the National Basketball Association. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code VMMAHOUR. Make any $5 bet this week and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. Again, that is code VMMAHOUR. VMMA hour. Very important. Please let them know that we sent you because there's a bunch of different codes out there and we don't want them thinking that it wasn't us. So VMMA hour only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Bit of a Halloween theme to that music, Frank? Week early. A little bit, yeah. But uh, that's fine. Uh, always loved. Oh, look at this guy. Wow. He's got the shirt and he's got the... The gear. Now, this is the same stuff, GC, that we saw on Saturday's same watch party, stuff, right? I just wanted to make Recycling sure. outfits now? When I just wanted everyone to know that, you know, the T-shirt curse, dead, merch, dead. Uh, both Never believed people, in it. Winners. Uh, you know, I don't know if you caught it Saturday. In the old AM, I was rocking the... Uh, Oh my god! Well, big get win there. The, oh my god! And it's just, it was a good weekend. The city ground was on fire. I, I I showed up. The guys over at MMA pins, Sean O'Malley pins too. Like, it, you're just a pig in shit just, right now. I mean, it's just all coming up. Merch, everything is is looking quite good right now. Thank you for reminding me of that. I mean, a massive win. Um, <laughs> it does it does not get any bigger. I was wondering. When we're ever going to see a win again from them? No, no, I never doubted. Uh, look, ever since they re-signed Stevie Cooper, uh, confidence has been high. Cohesion has been great. It proved to be a very smart move, even though some people said it was a stupid move. Five-year contract, I think it was. I don't really... If only we knew Liverpool, any like particular Liverpool fans that we could, you know, make fun of. I don't of. know of any. No. Unless you do, but they have no. to be any, in any, a bad place right now. Any fans of the show or any like members Not that I'm of the chat no. or anything? No, no one. All right. Well, uh, shout out to all the Forest fans. And, you know, shout out to the Liverpool fans. I, I think that means if, if MMA math works in soccer, that means we're better than Man City. So, top of the table. Top of the table. You'll never win that. Champions of a year up. You'll never sing that. Why so quiet in your crick? Uh, it looks like he's doing a little work over oh, there. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah, it's not I a mean, graphic. You know, there's, there's, phones are ringing. <clears throat> phones are ringing. Who knows Things what's going happening. on? You know, there's MMA stuff to to do while you guys <laughs> do your little Frank's, football talk. Frank I'll, scrolling uh, Instagram. I'll take care of business. And then you Frank, go. you're scrolling Instagram right now? What's happening over there? He is joking. Oh, okay. <laughs> the reaction that he had. Are a lot of people uh, throwing Frank under the bus today? I feel like Frank is older, feeling... Older little... than you, you mean? No, I mean, I just got there and I heard the talk. Thanks, Frank. I mean, yeah. Wow. Listen, I mean, Frank, I've always got your back. What happened to your voice, Near Crick? Are you all right? I think it was screaming at my kids this morning. Serious? Uh, was it that bad? <clears throat> yeah. Tough the, morning. It's what tough happened? Now. Jeez, <laughs> Louise. The, the kindergartner is... Uh, acting up? Not acting up. She's a really good kid. She's she's amazing. Avery is the love of my life, but... Slow to get out of the house? No, it's not even that. Just the energy needs to be, like, focused a little. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, good luck like, telling a kindergartner that. Just uh, all over the place, you know? Get dressed isn't isn't a command I want to give fifteen times, maybe maybe two times. Oh you know? my gosh! I have a kindergartner. It, it, are socks a big thing? Socks are a big thing with me. What do you mean by that? How many times do I have to tell you to put on your socks? Th this what? was the <laughs> this was the the screaming. This morning. okay? Wow! Look at Eric. Jeez, <clears throat> a disciplinarian. That's yeah. That's you know. For me to lose my voice, I have to really be screaming. Wow! I can't. I can't even picture you yelling like that. I, I don't go there often. <laughs> is it uh, one of those things where you do it and then uh, an hour or so later you feel bad? T t two minutes later. Two minutes. Uh, my my sweet angels, I can't I can't you know. Did she cry? 
she didn't cry, but she was. Oh no! She snapped to it. Oh she, my she gosh! Was, was her lip quivering? There was a little bit of. Oh, that. that's the worst feeling. Eyes watering? No, she, you know, not like that. It wasn't a full <laughs> breakdown, but things got done. Things got done after after Daddy laid down the law. What did your wife think about this? Or was she? she she's gone. She's oh, gone. even oh, worse. Me. No, she. <laughs> no one to turn. She's appreciative of the, oh, really? the hammer coming. Oh, okay. And, and laying I down. I mean, she's the a law. cop for goodness sakes. Yeah, but whips it, out the baton. There's a. There's a. Th- there's a fear of daddy that there isn't for mommy. Of course. You understand? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, trust me, I know. It, it, well, in actuality, like, mommy, mommy's the real tough one. Um, oh, really? Oh, yeah. I mean, she's the cop. She's the cop? Yeah. My wife is a is a superstar, is a stud, yeah. Um, New York cop, too. NYPD, City, yeah. NYPD. Um, but yeah, there's a fear of daddy that's not there, so she, she would appreciate it, believe me. Uh, this reminds me of a conversation I had with my son on Saturday. Uh, I thought that he was making one of his teammates feel bad after they let in a goal. And I went to talk to him after the game, how, you know, when, when, when your teammate is down, you have to lift them up. You don't make them feel bad. Came to find out the next day that it was in fact, the other guy who was blaming him. But my read on the situation was my son was blaming the teammate. So when I was talking to him, the eyes started watering, the lips started quivering because he felt like I was wrongly accusing him. Then I felt horrible afterwards. did we flip it? I mean, did you afterwards go, oh, sorry, I didn't understand. Well, it was the next day I was talking to the dad, and the dad came up and apologized to me. Uh, mm. Mm. I mean, this is a perfect transition to, to our parlay, no? Sure. Let's get into it. Right. Um, it so, was, uh, <laughs> let's, We'll show the graphic. Well, do we, do we want to just, you know, I, I feel like I need to be the, uh, you know, the professional here. I need to remind everyone that I guaranteed victory last week. Yeah, you did. Things started off really well. Things were going great. I think we were swimming along. I mean, we were, yeah, we were two for two. Uh, here, here's the four picks right here. Okay, uh, <clears throat> oof. Can't be Can we that. roll the tape, too? Can we roll the tape oh. from last week? Can we go back in time? You know, I was just thinking, go I wish we the had the let's, tape. Let's play the tape. Let's oh. play Why are you tape. going two and a half, not one and a half? <laughs> because I know it'll go over two and a half. Wow, he's that confident. Because, because I know it'll go time. over two and a half. Because I know it'll go over. <laughs> I mean, wow. <laughs> hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Looks right to me now. <laughs> was that cut at the end? I don't, I don't like that. That was our face. That was incredible. He said it. I mean, he gave us this guarantee. Oh my God. Anything to say? Again. I mean, five straight losses, boys. Five straight losses. The people, uh, it's it's not can, good. Can we say though? <clears throat> I think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. In this streak of five, it's always been one leg, right? Or or at least a few of these. Yeah, have been uh, quite leg. a few of them have been one leg. I want to say three of the five have been one leg. <clears throat> rough, rough out there. Still the feel thing, good about my pick, but it was yeah. a good pick. The thing was, like, I don't understand if one and a half is available. Why go to oh, two and a half? I'm I'm kind of the same. I'm kind of in the same. Is what it, we don't have a tape of is that I was flirting around with the idea of one and a half, and then I was like, you know what? Let's just push it a little further. But again, uh, if you think one and a half, have a tape of that. Why go yeah. to two and a half? I can understand like if you don't think it's going to go to one and a half, I'm, but right? I'm going to step in and help Frank here, please. If you felt this strongly, and it's not just hindsight, <laughs> Wait, I, then maybe you say something. There's a clip right there. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a clip. And then something. guess what? We let him roll with the two. Well, what am I going to do? I'm gonna, it, we, Can, if there's one also, thing we're not doing is bullying people into changing their picks. <laughs> we'll just we bully them. Just bullying after 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 I'm going to I'm gonna also... Here's the here's the more spirited defense of Frank. Okay. I, I can't even blame Frank. Yeah. This, this falls squarely on the shoulders of TJ Dillashaw. Yeah. That's it. TJ Dillashaw. I actually wrote him an invoice. Are we going to be that guy? I mean, this is one step removed from actually tweeting to TJ Dillashaw that he made us lose it's the parlay. fault. This is at TJ Dillashaw. You made me Stepped lose the parlay. You owe me some money. Well, no, truthfully, this is like circumstance. only stating facts, he did make us lose the parlay by getting in there. With yes, him. I know. But this is a dangerous game. Like, this is the number one thing that I hate that people do online. But I also agree with you. You're taking the risk. You you know the risk of, of betting your money going into it. We can't blame TJ Dillashaw. What are you talking about? Can't step in there like well, that. Well, can we blame? Can't. What does that even mean? Like that. What does that mean? You you can't come into a fight that compromised. What what should he have done? Pull out? Yeah. If he pulls out, 
He's never getting a title shot again. What? Why? There's too many guys there. Even him getting the title shot, even him been, getting that shot to begin with was controversial, was polarizing. Controversial, but, but UFC had no issue with it. You think TJ Dillashaw, at his age, not knowing if he's going to need surgery again, he's had surgery on his shoulders in the past, had surgery on the knee, not knowing how he's going to respond, over 35, you think he's going to be like, yo, I'm out? I just want to stop down here to say we're transitioning from joke to serious conversation. Yes, yes, we are. We are. We're moving on from the I don't life. I don't I don't agree. TJ doesn't deserve any blame for all of this. Nah, man. So what's the upside if you're TJ Dillashaw? Do you really walk into there thinking you can win that fight? Maybe. Man. I mean, these dudes are next level confident, right? They they don't possess like we don't That's fine. I I I can't. What do you think he should have done? Pulled out? Yeah. Mm. I don't know if he's getting 100%. another crack. I really don't. I, I don't. Wh- why? I don't know why you feel so strongly about that. It feels like all the momentum was behind TJ Dillashaw. What momentum? He had one fight since 2019. That, that's my point. If if that's the resume that he put forth, and they pushed him into a title shot, then he's golden. They're, they're they they want him to be in that position. So why would he not? There's just too there? many guys, too many names, too many guys with actual momentum. Cheeto, yeah. Cejudo's coming back. Uh, you they know, keep Jan. talking about these these names. None of them are getting the shots. Like we're talking about them. That's great, but they're having to pick each other off. I think the reason why they Cheeto. gave TJ this shot was like let's let's squeeze out one more thing out of this. You know, they could have done it again. I don't know. T- what if he needs surgery now and he's going to be on the shelf for another year? He ain't getting a shot even, after that. Even more reason that he shouldn't have been in that fight. Uh, look, first of all, got the payday, right? Got a well, championship that, I mean, that, payday. Look, if he needs, if he needs the money, I'm from not saying it, needs the money, but I'm sure it was a nice I'm check. Say, I'm saying that if if that's what the motivation was, I I can't argue with that. Great, but and by the way, could be the motivation, right? One fight since 2019. I'm I'm willing to grant that that is that's uh, on how much table. did he get? You know, how much did he get paid for uh, a Corey Sanhagen fight night main event? If you if this is your opportunity to reclaim the belt, so you're looking at that as one fight, right? But if the, if now you have to win the belt and then defend the belt and and continue to be a viable champion, you, you can't go into that that compromise and think that you're going to beat a guy like Aljamain Sterling. Are it, are you are you saying that in addition to this, are you saying Goddard should have pulled the plug? Nah, that I can't. I think that's I think it's on T.J. Dillashaw to to make that call. I would say maybe if in the course of the pre-fight checks and medicals and, you know, I don't know the nuances and the intricacies of, of what's going on there that hopefully, you know, we're not having fighters coming in this compromise, but to every fighter says they walk in with dings and, and dents, this feels a little bigger, right? He he was severely compromised. It's weird that that's your takeaway, and I can understand why it would be your takeaway. My takeaway was like, man, this guy is super tough. He, he, he dislocated his shoulder in... April, then says it popped 20 times en route to this fight, even gave the referee a heads up, hey, this is likely going to happen again. See, that that moment right there, that's the point where I think that this is different, right? This is different. But I, that, I have both those takeaways. I'm not questioning the toughness of TJ Dillashaw. He's one of, uh, while you, uh, on another program that, that you're a part of, yes. um, you were talking about this this fight with T.J. Dillashaw and Aljamain Sterling, and and there was a lot of reference to T.J. Dillashaw versus Corey Sandhagen. Yeah. And it was frustrating me to no end. It was, it was, whoa, whoa, whoa. It was boiling what did I say? my blood. The fact that nobody mentioned the fact that he blew his knee in the first round of that fight right. and still looked amazing. Right. It was just weighed as like, he didn't look great against Corey Sanhagen. He did enough. He might he might have scraped by. The dude blew his knee out and won that fight. Right. So Even more reason why he should have so felt like he could continue. His TJ Dillashaw's toughness is not in question here. It's whether this was a, a good accounting of himself to be able to win the belt and then go on to defend the belt. I think TJ Dillashaw's too too prideful um, for this to just be like, a, I went in there, gave a shot. I didn't really care. I think he wanted to be a champion. No doubt in my mind. But like, this was such a compromised position that you, uh, I you think like, he went into this fight and it was just like, this is it. It's there's no, there's that's no my, chance of me winning. I don't think that. I don't think that. Oh. But I think, what do you I think, think GC? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he went into it thinking there was a chance that he could win the fight. I mean, like you just mentioned with the Sanhagen fight, he fought on one leg that entire time. He was probably thinking he could do it with one arm this time. Do you I think he should have pulled out? Man, I don't think I have a strong enough opinion either way. Like, I can I can see the point that Rick is making, but I also see the point you're making on, like, dude's fought one time in the last 45 months. Like, 
he wanted a payday of a of a championship fight on a gigantic pay per view. Uh, I I don't I don't think so because also to another point that Rick made is is the pride that TJ Dillashaw has. I think that he believed in his mind there was a world where he could end up winning this fight. For sure, but does that not mean that somewhere along the line the system's failing? Right, whether it be TJ's responsibility, whether it be medical, whether like. For this to be yeah. the end result where somebody so severely compromises in this fight, that doesn't feel right to me. I'll be honest. That just doesn't feel right. But to your question about whether I think that's Mark Goddard's responsibility, probably not. I, d- I don't. No, I don't think it's Goddard. I saw someone ask Dana about it. I, I forget who it was, so I apologize if you guys remember. Let me know at the post-fight press conference. And he said, like, that's something that we should have known about. But on fight week, if you tell them, what are they going to do? Yeah, maybe they pull. So that's my point. Like something something didn't happen correctly here. But it can be simultaneously true that I think TJ Dillashaw should have pulled out of this fight and that he's historically tough. Like this guy is absolutely one of It was tough to watch. But yeah. th- I mean, so we're we're all saying the same thing no. about well, there, well, it not being good. I, I agree that it wasn't good per se, but I also don't agree with him. Pulling out, if he knows that he actually won a fight against a really tough guy in Corey Sandigan with a busted knee, I know that happened in the fight as opposed to before the fight. the fight. Yeah, He's probably thinking like, all right, I'm going to tough this out. I'm better than this guy. And uh, let's just pray for 25 minutes the shoulder doesn't dislocate. Well, then you know what? That's disrespectful as hell to Aljamain Sterling. And well, you think he, he rated Aljo better. very high? Should've, he didn't sound like he rated him one. very high. Because that dude is very good. Now, Aljo, he, okay, can we talk about Aljo for a second? Like, yeah. sure. what, what do you guys make? Like, the... You know, uh, there's a part of me that wants to say, like, stop caring so much. But we've seen this before, right? We saw, like, it's actually quite reminiscent of Woodley, um, who just couldn't connect with the audience and would talk about the audience so much that it it just felt like it just kept growing and growing and growing. How do you feel about him, GC? How do you feel about the way he handles all of this? Do you, do you think he should stop? Do you think it's part of his persona? What does he yeah, need to do? It feels like it's just become a part of his persona to this point. I mean, like reading the comments, responding to people. Uh, I mean, during the fight week, you you alluded to it, the Andrew Tate stuff. It, it felt like as I was scrolling Twitter that all I saw was him responding to people, and then he does it after he wins the belt as well. I feel like it's just kind of who he is. He did it ever since the yawn knee thing. Uh, I mean, as much as you tell him to stop, I don't I don't think he's going to stop. I wish he would stop. I, I wonder, For his own good. He doesn't yeah, like, need it. He's the champ. He doesn't need all this. I agree. I agree. And he says he doesn't care. I, w- I wonder if that does, you know, how you said Cheeto Vera, you know, a lot of people say they're at peace. A lot of people say they're happy. Cheeto Vera actually is. I wonder if Aljo, like, really just doesn't care what, what people say. I mean, he's got the belt, so he's he's done everything he needs to do. It hasn't seemed to stop him yet. Yeah. Right. And to to the point that he made on the show, he said it himself, like, he takes pride in the idea that he's going to say what he has to say. Whether you like it, whether there's response to it, he, and we saw the, the stubbornness in, in terms of him having to feel like he had to respond to all these tweets um, this week, or last week, rather. He's going to say what he wants to say, and there's, a, there's something to that, right? There's something to him feeling like he feels that he has that responsibility, and he takes pride in being able to, to walk that line and do that. I would, I would say if that's what's been working for him, then that's what's, what it's going to be. But two things, and this comes up with Sean O'Malley a lot. First of all, the people doubting him, the people against him, the people feeling like they don't like him, it only helps. Mm. It really only helps. This is the uh, Hamza Shemaev. Oh, it's going to kill his stock and this and that. He's right up there talking about huge fights. The the, the haters make you famous, as as Elwani. Yes, yes, time. Paris Hilton. So the people, <laughs> the people hating on him, it's it's only benefiting him in the long run. Also, I don't know about that. How how could you argue otherwise? Are they are how are they benefit? How is he benefiting from the hate? Is it because they're paying money to see him lose? Paying money to more see him lose, him. more attention. Would you agree that there's a fine line between hating someone, quote unquote, because it's not real hate? Yeah, they don't actually hate him. Sure, disliking someone, despising someone, whatever the the word is. Yeah. To the point where you want to pay to see them lose or disliking, despising to the point where you tune them out. Well, I, I, I think GC wants to go, but let me just say, 
I don't think Aljamain Sterling is a huge pay per view draw to start. Right? We're not we're not really talking about a. a he could be one day, but yeah, for sure one day. Not currently, and we're not talking a stratosphere where you're talking about like the Jorge Masvidal's uh, at his peak, the Conor McGregor, where there's actual decision making of like, am I plopping this down and talking five hundred thousand pay per view swings, one million pay per view swings? We're not in that territory, so I don't think the scale really reaches that that point where that's a question that needs to be thought about. It's more about is Aljamain Sterling in the conversation? Is Aljamain Sterling thought about and talked about and remains relevant? And I think the answer is yeah. I do, I do think, look, I don't think he wants to be reviled. I don't think he wants people to dislike him. I think he wants to be liked. He's a, he's a genuine dude. Um, but I think at the moment it's serving a purpose. It's serving a purpose. Um, and again, I don't think it's intentional. I don't think he is going out there saying, I want to troll and piss people off, although maybe some of the nicknames and all that stuff. Hmm. Um, but yeah, he's he's saying I'm I have a I have a position I have a point I have something to say and you're gonna either like it or not but I'm gonna say it anyway and this and I'll live with the outcome and I'm okay with that I'm okay with that yeah I'm with Rick there I feel like he's just kind of being himself and and some people just don't like it right all right so GC who's he fighting next oh my gosh it's who are you booking him against <sighs> so before the O'Malley Young fight I said if O'Malley won no matter what happened he would get the title shot right but I guess. I guess I don't know. Really, a really close, you know, controversial split decision maybe is the only way that he that he wouldn't. Ah, man, I'm gonna say Cejudo. That's that's gonna be my guess, my best guess. Right, Rick? Sean O'Malley. Really? Yeah. Why? That's the money fight. It, I mean, it is the money. When fight. the dust settles, they're gonna realize it's the just money. go with the name. Just yeah. go with Sean. Did he win, in your opinion? I haven't rewatched it. I have to admit. Upon live viewing, live, oh no! See, I, in live viewing, I was on with these guys mm. during that fight. I couldn't hear. I thought O'Malley landed the the more damaging and harder shots in round. By the way, why couldn't you hear? Did Frank mess it up? Did the yeah, audio issue? Mean, Frank, Frank blew it. Let's always. Oh, Frank, what happened? I don't want to go back to like. Okay, okay. We're moving right, on from Frank. Sorry, 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 sorry. Frank blows it all the time. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, we need to go back to that. <laughs> I thought everyone well, got audio. Frank, yeah. Sorry. I couldn't I couldn't hear the the sound of it, so it was a little it was a little harder to gauge. I thought Jan was busier, obviously, but I thought O'Malley did the the landed the harder shots, but wasn't hundred percent sure. I think that's O'Malley's round. Uh and then two was clear for, for Jan. Um and three I think I had for Jan in real time, but I've since seen a lot of people whose opinion I respect say that O'Malley won three. Yeah. So I haven't rewatched it. So in, in real time 29 28 Jan or even 30 27 Jan cuz I didn't have him win- I didn't have O'Malley winning round 3 and one I was kind of like a little bit unsure it was so close it but I so do think he landed the harder shot the more damaging shots in round 1 right. O'Malley did right. um and then Jan seemed to come on so 29 28 Jan but I'd have to watch this again uh to to be definitive cuz round 3 seems to be the round that I think a lot of people um may have initially scored for Jan but in close uh, upon closer inspection, maybe scored for O'Malley. Who you scored for? I you scored see? it for Jan off the bat rounds one and two. Jan round three O'Malley because O'Malley That's what I did yeah O'Malley cut him open bad in, yeah. in round three and I just thought I don't know it almost felt like people were sort of just assuming Jan was going to win. I mean the the live odds reflected it at that point. I think Jan was minus nine hundred going into round three, and they just kind of were like, oh, Jan got wow. this one too. Uh, and a lot of people called robbery but i mean he mentioned on the live show on the live show i scored round one for jan and mike heck scored it for o'malley and then in round three i scored round three for o'malley and he scored it for jan so like i feel like the only clear definitive round was round two and and jan won that one and then it just came down to the ones and the threes and it just was like it was just so close like i i don't think it was a robbery i think it was just an insanely close fight, and there's there's variance that plays into these things, and the judges saw what they saw. Do you guys, I've seen this posed a few times on Twitter, do you think a 29-28 O'Malley or a 30-27 Jan is more egregious? Neither. Uh, I, I would actually say 30-27 Jan. I thought, I thought O'Malley won the, the third. I thought I, he won the third as well. I don't think either. I don't think either of those cards is like. Wish we outrageous. had two more rounds. Yeah, you just think it was that close of a fight. It's that close. It round was, two was the only definitive round. 
you could say 29 like so if the, if that's the case if round 2 is the only definitive round uh, round the only score that i feel is out of the question is 30 27 o'malley right because yeah, obviously right. o'malley agree can win that. round 2 30 27 yan it's close enough that i'm like okay if that's how you scored it sure 29 28 o'malley of course 29 28 yan of course so yeah i i think to to put a bow on that of course not a robbery check out mmafighting.com alexander k lee robbery review as usual um reviewed it uh yeah not a robbery but but i do think i if i had a judge's scorecard it would have been 29 28 yan yeah that's that's what i thought watching that close uh i looked at, this isn't the best indication but on the mma decisions site mm -hmm. yeah every media i think there was like 26 or so media members every single one was for yan yeah, it's just a yeah. big sample size. So I think I, I don't I don't think I was entirely clear when I said this at the at the beginning. I think a lot of people thought round one was the one that was like could go either way, but I think round three is the one that people who are having a second watch of it are changing their opinion more. I mean, all three judges gave gave it. round three to to O'Malley. I yeah. in watching that in real time, I thought O'Malley won that one. By the way, I'm happy you brought up. Rick, the uh, robbery review, it's one of the best features. He does such a great job with that, A.K. Lee. Legend. Absolute legend. Great guy. Met him. Canadian as well. <laughs> um, he just does an amazing job, and it's up right now. One of the top things on uh, MMA fighting. I think, again, right now, gun to my head, I think that uh, they go Aljo Cejudo. I would love to see Jan versus Marab because of the heat there. I don't think they do that. Or I say, don't do that. I say do Cheeto O'Malley 2, number one contender fight, stakes massive, great backstory. That could be a gigantic fight. And then do Corey versus Marab as the next fight. Cheeto O'Malley 2, uh, gigantic main event fight night or like a co-main on a pay-per-view? It all, Honestly, it five almost rounds. feels too big. Yeah. That, that needs to be a five round fight. I'd love, I, I mean, mean please, man. if they put that at the apex, I mean, I might just, I might just be done. That needs no, to be a five can't. round fight. Right? Look, they've done five round fights on pay per views. Yeah. So throw it on a pay per view and, and do five rounds. But that, have we reached a point where a five round co main? Have we reached a point where a clear cut number one contender, and they usually shy away from this, should clear cut number one contender fights, reg even if it's the fourth fight on a pay per view, should be five rounds? Don't even finish this. 100%. Kind of don't hate it. I, I actually I'm feel, with you. by the way, I actually feel like a fourth fight on a pay per view, meaning, you know, second, fourth from the top. Yeah. But number one contender, if they come out and say this is the number one contender fight, that has more of a right to be five rounds than some of these main events that we get that are just five rounds because they're the last yeah. fight on the card. 100% sure. Right? Uh, I mean, 100%. The, the like issue. Amanda Lemos and Marina Rodriguez doesn't need to be five rounds, in my opinion. Here's right. the problem with this. Now you're putting something additionally in the UFC's hands to make decisions on, right? And there will be backlash for these decisions, right? If they say to Amanda Lemos, your fight's not five rounds because we don't think it's worthy, now you're getting into, into sticky territory. Why? Least, it wasn't right? even slotted as the original main event for the card. Okay, but see, that's a justification where you could say, okay, now because it's getting elevated, it's not the it's not five rounds. But what about a random fight night where you just go, is does this need to be a, a five round fight? Or are you saying every main every fight night main event five rounds plus number one contender? Yeah, that's yeah, probably the more number one contender. That's the more likely scenario because also because you're the telling the way. audience this is a lesser fight. Correct. It, but I'm just that's saying too, that's too tricky. I that's get too it. dicey. I think that plus plus number one contender fights you make them five hundred percent. Like, the I mean, problem is the UFC never wants to call something a true number one contender fight. So we'll never right. have this scenario. Right. Yeah. They will never like even this definitely. week, it wasn't like he was definitive I, about O'Malley. Aljo made, yes. made a great point yes. where he said, coming into it, it was Jan versus yes. O'Malley is the number one contender fight. This yes. could be the big moment for Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley wins, and Henry Cejudo is the first name off the lips. So... Yeah, I don't. We don't get those fights. That's the problem. There is never a fight anymore where they say. I wish they would. That person is the number one contender. It would make it the fight feel anymore. bigger. Yeah, it feels like they hedge. Also, I feel like not enough was made of the Cejudo mentioned by Dana because the last two years he's kind of no sold him since the retirement, and he loves to say I don't make fights on fight night. That to me was the closest to and, making a fight on fight night. And Volkanovski versus. Uh, well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> can, can I say two things? One. Uh, 
this proves my point about TJ Dillashaw could have gotten a title shot another time. This 100% proves my point because they they don't know who to give this to. They really don't. Cheeto Vera has a case. Cejudo has a case. O'Malley, Jan, they've all, Corey Sand. You, you can pick a name. I think TJ Dillashaw could have pulled out of this fight and delayed it or slid back in there. Anyway, number two, uh, Aljamain Sterling. We, we talk about whether people like him, hate him, whatever. Look, Just look at the resume, please. I implore you. I beg you to look at Aljamain oh, yeah. Sterling's resume. I beg you to look at the names that he has beaten, whether you want to grant him that uh, TJ Dillashaw shouldn't have been in there. It was controversial. The Yan knee, he didn't win that fight. Whatever you want to, what, however you want to slice it, look at the names on his resume. And I'm not even talking about in the title run. I'm talking about all the way back. Just look at every single name on that dude's resume and tell me that he doesn't belong in this spot. Please, I, be- I beg you. I beg you to look at that. I'll do it for you. First win in the UFC. He entered the UFC 8-0 in 2013, beat Cody Gibson, Hugo Viana, T- Takea Mizugaki, and Johnny Eduardo. Then he lost back-to-back... At the time, split- these are names, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sort of like running through them. Yep. But yes, I'm assuming that you've heard of them. Um, then he loses back-to-back splits, right? Split decision losses to Brian Caraway, who was a super tough out. Yep. And that was a close fight. And also Hafel Sunsau split decision, who's been around forever, still right about Still getting it done. Yep. Beats Augusto Mendez. Yep. Who at the super time was tough a out. Stud. Yep. Beats Henan Burrell, former champ. Yep. Gets brutally knocked out by Marlon Moraes. Scary yep. knockout. That's when I thought, truth be told, that would be the sort of sure. turning point of his career. There was always the knock on him that he didn't love getting hit. He gets brutally yep. knocked out. It was scary. He was stiff as a board, knee to the head. It was sort of like a weird sort of kick, but it looked like he hit him with the knee or the shin, whatever. It was scary. And now this is... Propels Marlon. Propels Marlon. He goes. All right. That's in December of 2017. He returns not that long after in April of 2018. Beats Brett Johns. Beats Cody Stamen. Beats Jimmy names. Rivera. Tough name. Beats Pedro Munoz. Slices yeah. through the super tough Corey Sanhagen in yeah. less than 90 seconds. The Jan fight, DQ, illegal knee. Yeah. Beats him convincingly, I thought... In this, I don't know, you know, how one... There are people who would argue. Yeah, but I thought it was pretty convincingly. And and then beats TJ Dillashaw. Like, these, you know... This is... this is The dude has fought everybody. Yeah. He's not it's scared annoying, of the challenge. But, it's it's unbelievable that he's still not getting respect for, for what he's done. But I also... Look, on the other side of the coin, I get it. Like, this is... I, I, I'm literally advocating that TJ Dillashaw should not have been in that fight. So I understand if somebody's like, eh, how, how do I weigh that? But the dude stepped in there and Aljamain Sterling won. He can only fight who's in front of him. Yes. And every time he steps in there, he's game. Yeah, so, you're talking about who's responsible for the TJ Dillashaw thing. Aljamain Sterling is not. He went in there, dominated yeah. from opening bell to when the fight was called. Put some respect on Aljamain Sterling's name. That's that's what I'm asking for. Let's talk about the main event. Yeah. Oh, New man. champ, Islam Makhachev. Uh, today's the two-year anniversary of Khabib winning his last fight and retiring, so there's more symbolism there back in Abu Dhabi. It's incredible. And, I mean, Charles hung tough. Uh, he tagged him as much as you could possibly tag him, but, I mean, look, no one's hanging tough with Islam, right? No, I mean, no one's hanging tough. What, you think he didn't represent? I mean, what? what? I, I mean, it's not that he didn't represent. That was a one-sided fight. Yeah, he got in a couple shots. What was it, 18 shots oh, total? 19, 19. 19. He broke the 13 curse, though. Yeah. Uh, most ever landed. Islam on. is just on another level and he's finishing yeah. guys. That was the uh, high profile win that had been eluding him. And there's nothing more high profile than winning the belt in the main event against <laughs> someone like Charles. Uh, and, and, and as I said at the top, now this is fun because, you know, I mentioned he didn't fight any of those top guys. That's not me hating. That's just spitting facts. He didn't fight Chandler. He didn't fight Ferguson. He didn't fight Gaethje. He didn't fight all these guys poor yet. But now it means all those guys are like, ah, look at me. Ch- I feel like the Chandler Poirier fight, the stakes have now gotten bigger because both those guys had losses to Oliveira. Now they can hopefully fight for the belt if things go their way in 2023. But it's going to be Volkanovsky next. Wow, what a scene that was. I love that he was there. I love that they called him in. I love everything about it. Do you think that they planned to have him come in there or was that impromptu? I think it was impromptu. I actually think, think DC is the one that made it happen. Yeah. He jumps the guard yeah. and he comes over. I, I think DC made it happen. Now, credit to Khabib. That post-fight interview was like, I wish I could show it to people. It had everything. That was like they hit a 10 on 10 in that post-fight interview. Huh, it was okay. emotional. He 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 pays homage to Abdulmanap, the late Abdulmanap, yeah. pays homage to Khabib, gives him the belt. Khabib then gets on the mic 
and gives him props. Yep. Then he mentions Volkanovsky. Then Islam yeah. quickly turns from humble to where's this short guy? Yes. I mean, it had it all. It where's this short right. guy? Beautiful. And then Volkanovsky right. comes in. It was beautiful. Islam has really come into his own. I remember the first time I had him on the show, um, and it might have been the only time because, of course, things changed afterwards. You know, we got the old can't talk to the guys, <laughs> yeah. even though, you know, secretly we know they all love and, and wish they could be on. He was very quiet. He was, he was, you know, he, it's very hard to not make the Khabib comparisons. And for as long as Khabib was fighting, he was always going to be in his shadow. Um, and, and they're just so similar and their styles are so similar that it's very hard to not make those comparisons. Now you see him, I see him rocking the sunglasses, the way he conducts himself, the way he holds himself, the way he walks, the way he talks. He's very much coming to his own. He is a star and he's going to be a gigantic, his life is about to change dramatically. Just look what happened to, um, to Khabib. This is fun. It's fun now because it, it definitely feels like it's the passing of the baton from Khabib to him. So now it continues. Vulcan, and it worked out perfectly for the UFC because I think Charles is going to fight in Rio and I think he should fight Benil. And now you've got Volk versus Islam. And Islam deserves a lot of credit for saying in the moment, I'll go to Australia. There was no hemming and hawing. There was no negotiating. There's no let's see. It was definitive. It was in the moment. It gets us all excited. GC, what do you think? Volk versus Islam. Because I saw the odds, right? Isn't, yeah, isn't Volk yeah. a big dog? Islam open as a minus 400, Volk coming back plus Minus 400. Wow. It's just like... More? Man, you think it should be more? Push that. Wow. Push that. It's just so tough. I mean, the size disparity push between them. Up. Like, the way that Islam just... It, it felt like he did what he wanted to against Charles. Like, it felt like Charles was just in the deep end the entire time. And then the fact that he dropped him with his hands to lead to the finish was just a, a scary proposition for anyone. Oh, man, it's it's hard to doubt Volk with with how incredible he's looked lately, and we know he can pack on some size and some bulk. But this this is a tough matchup, and he hasn't really been matched up with a wrestler with the skills of Islam before. And doing it going up a weight class, it's a tall task. It's a tall task. If Volk pulls it off, I mean, the legend of this guy he's, will He's all-time great status. I mean, you're talking about, like... All time of the all timers. If he pulls this off, especially in front of the Australian crowd, could you oh, imagine what the scenes scene. there if he does it? I'm I'm torn on like because Volk is one of my favorite fighters. I mean, top three, but I I I enjoy watching Islam fight. I mean, the dominance, the the whole. He's not boring at all. There used yeah. to be a knock on him early on that he was boring. There's, no, I mean, five I think it's finishes. five straight finishes. Yeah, that that. that Fight with Charles was firecrackers, and plus, I I just kind of enjoy his style, and you know, obviously, being been cheering for him all year with the future bet. So, okay. I don't know. I, this, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna you can cash that one, right? I don't uh, know. Yeah. Just in case something happens, you know, a drug test yeah. or something right. weird, we're not gonna oh, cash right, it just right, yet. Right, right. But uh, but yeah, that's I cannot wait for that one. I don't know what I'm gonna do. It would it would be it would be insane. It would be absolutely insane. But this to me feels like Israel versus really. Kovic. Wow. Do you think ill-advised for Volk? It just... Should he not do this? Will it hurt I, his I stock? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think it hurts his stock. No, no, no. it won't hurt his stock. We, you it's know, going up against the machine. No, I think, I think Izzy's stock was hurt a little bit. No, no, no. Yes, the aura of invincibility not, is gone. Not in the not in the bank account because he signed what he said was the second sure. richest uh, contract on the roster. So not in the bank account. Right. Um, I, I don't like it. I don't like it because I think... This champ champ thing has made people think that it's easy or or not right. that it's easy. Because I don't think Volk is the type of fighter that it's like, oh, you know, this is disrespect. Like, it's not that it's easy, but that there's weight classes for a reason. There are weight classes for a reason. They're like, we don't need this fight. I really don't. I don't. You have no interest in it. I'm not that interested in it. because oh, I'm really, Wow. Poo-pooing really it. Who would you I, rather see? Okay. So then who would you rather see is some fight? Benil? Yeah, sure. You're more excited for Benil. Islam than Volk Islam. Not, not, see, in this, Australia? Is the, this is the thing. I can't, like, <laughs> no, it wouldn't be in Australia. Excited is, is not that, like, <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying no, like, if, if you were in charge, there's a better fight. You know, see, that that's, but that, those if you were booking. are two different questions. These are two different, different uh, questions. That's the more profitable fight. That's the fight. Which one? Especially uh, Volkanovski. We don't necessarily, I mean, Volkanovski fighting against Josh Emmett in Australia is still selling out. Volkanovski sure, fighting against uh, Yair is selling out. For sure. But is it, is it going to sell more pay-per-views? Are there people going to be more interested in it overall? Is is general mainstream media going to be more interested in Volkanovski versus contender or Volkanovski versus Islam? And the answer is Islam. Would I rather see Benil Dariush, who I think is a top, who's proven himself to be a top lightweight, a really, really well-rounded, tough guy, fight 
Islam Makachev more? Yeah. The answer is yeah. I don't – and maybe it's me and I'm going to have egg all over my face and Volkanovski is going to do the impossible and shock the world again, oh, which he has yeah, always man. continued to do. But I am i don't have that much interest in that fight. I, I think weight classes exist for a reason. I think Makachev is an absolute savage. And some of these champ-champ fights are stylistically – it, the style is important. Islam Makachev is not the guy yeah, this, to go this up there and take a shot a, against. Not a great stylistic matchup. Well, I don't like when they force the uh, double champ stuff. To me, because no one has emerged as a clear-cut number one contender at 45. And by the way, our guy Arnold Allen might have a thing or two this, to say about that come Saturday. I was going to say this weekend. Yeah. Uh, you got to be hyped. The, tra the train's out of the station on this one. Sure, of course. Of course. But... um that's why I don't mind it, because it doesn't feel... In fact, he had a great line to BTS on an interview, a clip of an interview with uh, Volk last week where he's like, hold up the division. They're holding me up. I want to fight. <laughs> I want to get active. Like the, the, I like it. You know, so I, I actually think that he has a great point. I talked about the 10-on-10 10 10 post-fight interview from yeah. Islam. Uh, in that regard, or with, with that in mind, reminds me of Benil's zero on 10 post-fight interview. Oh, I mean, one of the all-time worst. What a performance. I mean, he was incredible against Mateus Gamrod. You get on the microphone, first of all, it starts to go in the right direction. You know, nice shout out to the, the, the people of Iran. His people loved it. Then all of a sudden, in a predominantly Muslim arena, you start talking about Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know if you're going for the heel turn, fine, God bless. Dicey, dicey stuff. Then you say, I don't want to beg. Of course, you remember the Tesla comment where, you know, just like leads to the jokes. I'm not going to beg. I'll fight 10 more guys if I have to. What? Yeah. Don't say that. Don't Get on the mic and say, everyone's passing me up. What more do I have to do? Now, do you, are you guys okay with Benil versus Charles? That feels like the fight to make, right? You, you think they do it in Brazil? Yes. Sure. I mean, I'm Whatever. down for that. No? I, I, I thought Benil looked great. How many more guys does Benil need to fight? Well, oh, so you think he should wait for the winner of Volk versus Islam? I mean, he's not fighting for another year then at that no. point. Whatever. Well, he's got to make money. He said he'll fight 10 more guys. Yeah, by the way, he doesn't, seem like too he, doesn't, he doesn't seem too bothered by the whole situation. So well, why should you be? See, this week it seemed like he was. Like all, all throughout, it seemed like he was. The situation sucks. Right. You know, the Volko, he was talking about the Volko thing not being the right move. Then it shifted on Saturday for some reason to like, okay, whatever. Like that, that I don't get, but. It didn't seem like he cared at all. Yeah, I. I'll fight 10 more guys, he said. It's I, like the worst thing you could possibly say. I'd be okay with him waiting. The dude deserves it. The dude deserves it. Yeah, I mean, it's just call it what it is. As far as 55 is concerned, he 100% deserves it. Seven like, straight wins, I think, now. As far as that division is concerned and guys who haven't gone to shot, he's the last one left. He's He's the only guy. But they're going with the Volk fight, clearly. So the sure. next best thing, fight Charles. You beat Charles in Rio? Yeah. Is it that easy? It's, no. You just beat Charles in Rio? Yeah. Okay, great. Sign everybody up. I mean, imagine it's it, not, Imagine if Benil does beat Charles. The, like, the, where, the stature of Charles' career over the course of three months will have dropped off. Yeah. No. See, this is how I feel about Charles. And I was actually going to ask you, one of the questions I had was, what do you, what do you, how do you contextualize Charles's championship run? Like, what yep. do you think of that? Um, I don't think it hurts Charles at all. This dude, that, that championship run is up there. You talked about Islam, right? And you talked about how he never fought anybody in, in the top. One, to that, I would say one, you know, RDA and him were booked and, and that didn't happen. Like, that's not Islam's fault um, that, 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 that didn't happen. Two, you can look at skills. And just know, like Habib, we know. We know that Habib was good enough to be the champion. We know that Islam Makhachev was good enough to be the champion. And then they proved it. Uh, to, to the point, Charles fought everybody in the top. Mm -hmm. And he got beat by somebody who didn't fight anybody in the top. That's not how this works. Right. Um, but Charles fought everybody in the top and and looked damn good doing it. I will remember his title reign as one of the like most exciting, the most awesome the the guy who was not afraid to fight anybody anywhere anytime. Sure, I will look so fondly upon his title reign, and I think it's up there with some of the best. Like he came out of nowhere, a guy that was left for dead as as never going to be a champion because of the early stumbles he had in his career, and took it by the horns and fought everybody, and just ran into a guy in Islam who's just better. That's that's unfortunate, but that title reign, I think he this is all house money from now on. Charles, Charles Oliveira is a legend of this game. Because of how that title reign went, and not only that, because of how his career started, right? And, yeah, of course. The whole story. But here's the thing: I don't, I don't like the all-time best stuff. I, I feel comfortable saying it's an all-time great run. 
I feel yeah. very confident yeah. saying that. But I do think he has a few things going against him. Number one, he didn't beat Habib, right? Habib was the guy who had the belt right before him. So the fact that he didn't beat that guy makes it feel like it's You're not talking exactly about in in the best lightweights ever conversation. Yeah. In this yeah. in the same era, but he didn't get a chance to fight him. You know, Bisping made some waves saying great like who I, just think think about Anderson Silva this week, right? Yeah. There was once a time where people confidently said he's the greatest of all time. Does anyone say that now? Yeah, it's, it, no. Has it changed. always changes. It always fluctuates. Even when I say GSP, it changes. It fluctuates. You're, Even in basketball, like I, th- I feel like you know now you know now the new generation says it's LeBron, and then the generation prior to MJ says it's it was Bill Russell or it was Kareem. Kareem. Whatever, yeah. Well, it. it it's so hard to say greatest of all time, and especially in MMA where championship reigns are so volatile and end so abruptly. But there's a separate case for everybody. Yeah. It's different It's different things. But to your point, championship reigns are so volatile. That's what I think the argument is for Charles. That's what, and I'm not, I, by the way, I'm not, I don't personally think that it's Charles, but the argument for Charles is- Who is, is the greatest lightweight champion of all time? In the most volatile situation of championship fights- that dude went in there with everybody at the top and smoked them and finished them. That's that's something to note. Who's because, the greatest lightweight champion because, in your opinion right now? BJ? One more thing. Right. BJ Penn did that, but not for as long as Charles. Uh, Only defended the title twice. Exactly. No, uh, no, no, Charles. Well, okay, but... And technically, he only defended it once if you want to get real To win technical. the title as well. Uh, right, right. That is getting real technical. And then going in there with Islam. Um, uh, Habib... There's a lot, a lot of people. I don't agree with this. Will make the, like will say he doesn't have enough title defenses, and he didn't go in there with guys who who were good enough. Like I, I think that's nonsense. But the 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 people will make it fit what they want to argue. There's really not a definitive answer. I think the more interesting question is who at their peak was the best, because the the again the criteria is different for everybody. It's like the MVP voting. It's the goat conversation. Yeah. The criteria is just different for everybody, and there is no consensus. I think more interesting is who at their very very best was the best, and you know I Charles, think it was Charles an all time great combat. run. But yeah. ultimately, like, and I don't want to be he only, he defended it twice. BJ defended it three times. Um, so like, does that count for anything? I don't know. The strength of schedule for Oliveira was super tough. Super tough. When BJ was fighting at his peak, when I thought he was arguably the best pound for pound fighter on the planet, he was running through guys. Charles was yeah. getting hit. He was getting roughed up. You know, like okay. he was. In, I'm just saying. But he finished those yes. in spectacular fashion. So did so did uh, BJ. Yeah, yeah. Submitting Kenny, submitting Sean Shirk. Diego fight. I mean, massive killed him. Massive so massive. The, the thing is, I don't know. It it, it it almost it's like possible man. It it yes. It, it like gets us. We get bogged down into this whole like greatest of all time thing. It was an. I feel very comfortable saying it's an all time great run. It's a run 100%. that we should remember and recognize. It's not one of those like oh wait that dude was champion. No no it, no way. I think I think people will remember it because of how many fans that he oh, harbored. And that, that's the, run. the other thing. He, he was he not popular at all, and then he became a superstar. Um, and by the way, beats. Let's say he fights on the Rio card, and you know he'll come across as a. He might come across as the biggest star on that card. Yep, He's way more will, famous yeah. than Davison Figueredo. If Nunez fights on the card, I'm curious to see how she is received. But like, he will be one of, if not the top draws, if he fights on that card. 100%. Wins that fight. He's fighting around the same time as the belt. He could go back in there. Right. I don't know if there'll be a huge demand because of how one-sided it was, well, but that's the thing. crazier things have happened. It would be a bigger, bigger fight than Benil Dariush, but... Should you put him in there with Makachev, who completely dismantled him before you put him in there right. with Dariush? I mean, it's and like you you've said a couple times on the show so far, it feels like the uh, the contenders have like a reset, like a total reset, yeah, new, which is fun for the division, a new lease on life. So they really could put anyone in there with him. Also, I know I keep asking everyone about this, and I've said it myself. Does it sort of feel like Saturday also officially signaled the end of Habib's career? No, no. Habib was done when he said he was done. You think so? To me, it well, feels... Well, we had the whole flirtation with the Dana White thing. It feels like this... Of it, look, if 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 Charles would have beaten Islam... This, it's disrespectful to Charles, in my opinion. You you think there's a world that... What do you mean? Charles beats Islam and yeah. Habib's the, like, all right, the, the I'm coming back. Yeah. The passing of the belt didn't Man. go Habib to Islam. Charles Oliveira... No, I know. But that's what I'm saying. It, it left it open. If he would have beaten his guy and then would have went on and been like, all right, what's up? Oh, you're saying close the door on, yeah. on Habib? Uh, Habib was done. 
Uh, I'll be I felt like that. until Islam fought for the belt and until we saw the result of that fight, I was still leaving the door open. Now I'm ready to close that door. I just, I'm just saying. Me, it boggles my mind. I'm ready to close the door. How many times Habib can say I'm done? Like literally. <laughs> you, 10, Mr. MMA times. retirement guy? He's the one I believe. Uh, He's the one I believe. You don't think. You don't think he could do the – like, they've offered him GSP, all this money. Mm. This dude could have done this anytime he wanted. And all of a sudden, Charles beats Islam, and he's like, yeah, this, that's the one. This dude was done and has always told us he was done and said, my mom told me to be done. And everybody – Yes, like, yes. You've, I appreciate 10,000 times he said he's done, and everybody's like, are you done, though? I'm, I'm just, just saying until Islam fought I, I mean, for the belt, I'm I wanted to see – By the way – I don't know if he was with uh, Bilal calling him heavyweight Khabib. <laughs> <laughs> How about Bilal? Can, Yo, I, uh, talk about Bilal. I, I, I said it at the top. I was supremely impressed. I think Bilal, there's a couple, I was starting to think about most improved fighters. And there's a few guys who are on the short list. And, and sometimes it doesn't fit into a year, right? It's more of like an arc. Like Cheeto, I think, is on the most improved list. For sure. I think Bilal is on the most improved list as well. But it also dates back to... You know, Damian Maya, Wonder Boy, which are last year fights, but his two fights this year, Vicente Luque and now this one, I rated Sean Brady very high. And oh, yeah. and again, as we talked about, like uh, Marlon knocked out Aljo and look what happened to Aljo and so many guys, look what happened to Charles. Like people lose. So this isn't the end of Sean Brady. No chance. But, but undefeated, stud wrestler, super tough, had looked somewhat invincible. Bilal freaking beat the crap out of him. A standing TKO by Bilal was... <laughs> One of the last things that I expected yeah. to see. I was watching you know the odds. Those, on, uh, on, it was over a thousand for him to get KO. Oh, wow. KO and wow. like, wow. When, I was watching it with no sound. And when they called the fight, I was actually in shock. It was unbelievable. By the way, the, the lightweight champion of the world who looks un, unstoppable and got knocked out. As yeah. a crusher got knocked Davey out. Davy Hamas. So, yeah. So uh, Sean Brady has has plenty of time to, to write that ship. No doubt. Uh the th I, somebody said this, and I think I saw it on Twitter. And I'm and f please, whoever said this, forgive me. I, I saw it on Twitter. It might have been something like John Anik retweeted or something. I, I saw this, and and it summarizes Bilal perfectly. The people that were sleeping on Bilal is because he's so well rounded, but he doesn't quite have that like I'm gonna submit you, I'm gonna knock you out thing. He doesn't he doesn't quite have that like game changer thing. Mm -hmm. But what's so impressive uh, about Bilal Muhammad is he's so well rounded that he can. Like it reminds me of GSP a little bit. I'm not comparing. Please, I'm not. Comparing wow. This off. I'm not comparing. Clip it off. To GSP in terms of legacy and all that stuff, but he fights you where you're worst and where he's best, and he has these advantages because he's so well rounded that in a battle with Sean Brady, he can go. You know what? I'm going to strike with you, and I'm I'm confident that I'm the better striker, and I'm going to take it here. Everybody wanted to see the grappling. Everybody was talking about the grappling, but this is where I think I have an advantage. And he can do that to a lot of different welterweights. And I think that that's what makes him so dangerous is, yeah, he's not the guy who's going to come in there and one shot, you know, knockout, but he is the guy that is smart enough to stick to a game plan. And there's areas against every single fighter where he's going to have an advantage because he can do everything so well. Um, it's, it, you know, remember the name, put some respect yeah. on Bilal Muhammad. That also training with Khabib good. and that team, very smart move on his part. Yeah. Is Khabib, yes. is Khabib coach of the year? <laughs> I mean, it's hard to argue against. By the way, a long time... Again, this uh, this is like me being Aljo here. and talk, When I was doing the show with DC, I said I think Khabib is going to be coach of the year. I even predicted that he would probably win it. And yet I still get, why you hate Khabib, bro? Why you? I know some people, yeah. oh, you bunch of haters. You don't like Islam. You don't like this team. Like, ah, oh, shut the fuck up. These people are so annoying. They, they have to be the most annoying. Like, even if you say he hasn't beaten any of the top guys at 155, as I'm going to this, why are you such a hater, bro? Why are you such a hater? Like, well, I don't know. What do you want to make up names on the, the resume? He has looked great. I want to see him fight Gilbert. You want to see Bilal? Yeah. Bilal fight yeah. Gilbert. Yeah. I'm down why for not? that. You know what? I think, look, Bilal versus Hamza, I'm intrigued. I'm interested. I'm nah, down. Give me, give me yeah. Hamza Colby. Yeah, but to Bilal's um, point, Bilal said it in the post fight. Where's Colby? Mm, at some point, he's going to have to hey, go back. Hey, Colby, talk is about it. it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what happened. Poker tournaments? <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. I saw Has he, he done an interview point. since? No, nah, where's thing? Colby at? Yeah, it's weird. So if you're if you're wasting the time, if, if you're out on the side, and look, if I'm Colby Covington, do I want my fight back to be Hamza Chemaev? 
Man. Probably not. That's no, tough. But what a great fight that is. Great fight. But I, that's probably not my move if I'm Colby Covington. I'd rather, hell, I'd rather go down to 155. I'd rather go up to 85. I don't want a piece of Hamza. That's that's just facts. That's that's the truth. If Bilal can slide in there, it's not a bad move. It's not a bad move. No, it's not a bad move at all. And credit to him for saying he wants it because not a lot of people would say that. <laughs> he's the He's been the loudest voice. Well, See Neil that? Magny. Yeah, well, he wasn't going to get it, though. Yeah. I was going to advocate, I was going to come up here and advocate for Abu Bakr versus Hamza, yeah. but now they're buds. They're, they've, the peace has been made. What a weird turn of events that was. Yeah, with the FaceTime. Bilal, yeah, Bilal is shouting from the rooftops <laughs> that he wants Hamza. I say give him to him. Why do you have to break Colby Covington's arm to take it? <laughs> What's a better matchup for Hamza? I mean, they're all good matchups uh, for Hamza. I was going to say, there's no bad matchup <laughs> right. for Hamza. I'm a big believer. Yeah. I'm a big believer in that guy. He can do a cage side. He can do it in the actual cage. He's he's never he's never out of it. Uh, I've got faith. GC, what's the long, What do you think the line would be for Manon against Valentina right now? Valentina, a, a sizable favorite. Sizable. What about oh. Manon versus Alexa? I think that's probably Super Manon, close. Yeah, like a, a slight favorite over her. What about O'Malley Cheeto two? Man, I don't know where they'd line that. I mean, Cheeto won last time, but with the way he won, what are, what are the odds makers going to do with that? That that would have to be a just a razor thin close line. Yeah. What about Benny Oliveira? Oliveira, the favorite. Yeah, for sure. What about Sterling Cejudo? <laughs> see, Ster- I could see I could see Aljo opening as the favorite, and then people betting Cejudo. I, I think mm-hmm. I think the Sterling Dillashaw line gives you a good clue of how Sterling Cejudo's line would look. That was but pretty close, no? Giving, yeah, but Aljo was the favorite and, and stayed the favorite. I think it would look pretty similar because, you know, Dillashaw has all the accolades. He's he's able to come back in there. I think people would look at at Cejudo pretty similarly there. I think the line would be right around there, rightfully giving respect to Aljamain Sterling, in my opinion. If it was Sterling Cejudo, Frank, would you bet over two and a half or over one and a half? <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> By the way, I think O'Malley might be a favorite over Cheeto. You think uh, so? Yeah. Wow. Um, so here's just a random look ahead line. They, they just usually have random ones. Uh, Corey Sandhagen versus Cheeto Vera. Corey Sandhagen minus 205. Yeah, that doesn't surprise Cheeto me. Vera plus 170. Wow. It, it, and it's not a disrespect to Cheeto, again, because betting, first of all, betting lines, I've said yes, this yes, many yes. times, but it's worth reiterating. Betting lines are not who do the bookmakers think is going to win. That's not a thing. That's not how betting lines are established. It's to get equal action on both sides. So public perception and other things go into it. Anyway, the Cheeto Vera style is a hard one to cap, to 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 talk about when it comes to betting in action because he's not very active. He He's willing to sit back and counter, and he's somebody who has fight-ending power, as we've seen in this run. Um, but it, sometimes it comes late, and sometimes, you know, it looks like, like Dominic Cruz, right? Dominic Cruz was much more active. He was kind of banking some rounds against Cheeto, but what Cheeto had faith in and ultimately ended up coming true is – at the end of the fight, I'm going to still carry that power and I'm going to finish you. And then he rocked them multiple times and, and did finish that. But that's a hard style to to navigate when you're talking about betting lines because you're basically saying, like, I'm sure that Cheeto is going to do this at some point in the fight, but I don't know when and hopefully it's going to come late. It doesn't give you a lot of co- – it's not a confidence instiller. It's 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 more just like you have to trust that Cheeto Vera is going to be in there late and finish the fight. Sean O'Malley is somebody who's going to come out and put that pressure on from jump. And that's that's an attractive betting style, I would say. That's an attractive style for betting lines, I would say. So I wouldn't be surprised. And then obviously the popularity. For, um, so for context, for context, O'Malley closed around a minus two eighty five last time out against Marlon. Two eight minus two. Interesting. Okay. Big favorite. Big favorite. I think we have a lot more data now that it'll be different, but I don't know how much different. I think I think o- O'Malley's style. And and his popularity will help influence that, in my opinion. Are you as well as Cheetos? Are you able to put a bet? I mean, this might be too specific on the Mohaev by March twenty twenty four. Like, is there? <laughs> yeah, a pro- nah, I, I think that's too specific. I feel no. I feel like it's such a thing now. Nope. Someone should put it on there. No. Yeah, that would be great if DraftKings did it. I mean, would you- everybody who talks about this just falls flat on their face, though. It I would. I would take it just for the hell of it. Just just for for fun. 
Just because it's gonna such do a fun that, thing. Yeah, if you're going to do that, you also have to give me a bow nickel by the end of 2024, but... Wow. End of 2020. Unfortunately, we got the news last week that he's heard. Yeah. Confirmed that with him. Uh, said hoping for a return in the spring. But I don't see why Mokayev couldn't do it. Yeah. I don't see why. Oh, not. he's got a lot. I mean, he's got plenty of time. He's got a little less than two years. 17 months. Yeah, 17 months. In a division where, and honestly, like the UFC could dictate this, right? Yeah. They can make it happen to where he is. Uh, the problem is, we're going to have to run. Davison and, and Brandon 10 times at least till I'm satisfied. No, I think we're done. <laughs> Let's just keep doing it. Unless they can imagine they fight to a draw. <laughs> Why not? Oh my gosh. Tetralogy, quadrilogy. Another one. I'll, I'll run it forever. Give it to me forever. So that's the story as far as uh, 280 is concerned. Islam with the big win. Charles will rebound. Aljo's got options. TJ, you think he'll fight again? I don't know if he's ever going to get a title shot at this point. I mean, the body is. You know, it's breaking down. It's um, like, this, this is why. This is why you don't take that fight. No, Pull this out. is exactly why. No, I'd say yeah. this is exactly why, because he's not getting it again. He's never getting it. No. Sean O'Malley celebrating a birthday today. A uh, huge opportunity for him. Jan, I mean, that that knee continues to, to haunt him. His life would be completely different. He wouldn't rematch him. No, yeah, imaginable. that's an interesting sliding doors. I didn't it's think of it's that. the sliding doors moment. It's yeah. like, it's he doesn't throw that knee. He wins wow. the fight. Yeah. He doesn't rematch him. He doesn't lose that. I know there's the Sanhagen fight in between there, but, um, and then, you know, who knows? Who knows what happens to him? Who knows how his life goes, where he goes, who he fights? Big win for Benil Darius over Mateus Gamro, Mano Fioro with the win over Chukagian. Um, Bilal, as we said, Borelio. Krilov continues to quietly rack up wins yeah. in the light heavyweight division. It's unbelievable. Uh, Abu Bakr Namagomedov, two fights on Saturday. He won the official one. <laughs> Armin Petrosian, Mohamed Mukhaev, and uh, Karol Hossa, who uh, I think one of us had uh, yeah, on the, uh, stuff for you. the picks. Stuff for you. Let's hear of uh, your picks, GC. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's run through them real quick. Um, yeah, I had Karol Hossa as well. Then I had just a, a brutal losing streak on the unders. I, I lost three straight. Ohio, I had the money line, missed the sub prop. Looked like he was going to have a couple opportunities, but the uh, the sub prop losing sp- streak just continues. Uh, Sean Brady lose that. Furo bounce back. Piotr won hurt because of how big of a bet it was, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, I am a fan of Sean O'Malley, so that was cool to see him win. Uh, the Makashev round one, two, and three was great at plus 150. Parlays, we did pretty good, uh, you know. The Muhammad knockout definitely hurt us. We would have hit another one, and then obviously the Sterling over two and a half kills another one. So overall recap, down 1.79 units. On the live stream, I thought it was, without being able to do the math in real time, I was I was really thinking it was going to be way worse. I was thinking I was looking at like six or seven units down. So 1.79, not, not the end of the world. Uh, we do have the future out there. Hopefully, you know, Nothing crazy happens, and Makashev keeps this until uh, the 31st, and we'll we'll cash a 4.2 units on that, which will be great. And then on the live stream, we did a we did a little chat bet. Oh yeah, I, I did a a poll on the chat: who's going to win between Dariush and Gamrock? Because I had no action on it, and then we said by KO submission or decision. They said Dariush by decision plus 350. That ended up hitting. Not going to count it towards the overall record, but that was uh, that was a fun thing to do. So shout out to the chat with that. I like that you did that, by the way, because I believe one time you told me not to listen to the chat. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was, uh, you know, a little bit of lunch money. I bought my Keck wings because of it. So uh, Before or after? Afterwards, at wow. lunch yesterday. Where'd you guys go? Uh, over Stone Street, right by the uh, right sick by the invite, office, bro. Yeah. Wow. Mm, wow, that's uh, that's funny, Frank, because I invited you twice and Whoops. you denied me. Wow. Uh, so yeah, we good can... wings. Yeah, pretty good wings. Blue cheese. They're no, uh, they're no Bonnie's. Uh, What's Bonnie's over in Brooklyn? That's the uh, Bills bar that me and Frank. Oh. shout out to Bonnie's. Yeah, uh, and then we blue got cheese? A... blue cheese. Oh, of course, blue okay. cheese, blue cheese. Uh, and then we got a couple shout outs to DraftKings, Miss Mary, six one six. Uh, and then let's do some big hitters. The big hitters were fantastic this week. Oh, yeah. Love this. I mean, this now pales in comparison to what I saw on the uh, the watch party. I saw crazy graphics on that thing. Championship fight, all of a sudden I'm seeing, like... You think so? Better graphics than the actual broadcast. Pretty good, man. This is- I mean, this is great. But then I saw that, and I was like, golly. All right, let's dive right into it. The biggest hitter of the week. 
plus 46,765, 11 legs. I mean, pretty much picked every single fight and just nailed it. Uh, killer hippie. He knows what he's doing uh, when it comes to this. He put $50 down and wins 23432 I mean, that is, that's like some life-changing money. I don't know I Killer Hippie's financial status, but I would, I would be feeling pretty good about myself had I won that. I mean, uh, unbelievable stuff from him. Uh, next up, 6MMA2, plus 19383 So he goes Benil Dariush. That's how we start this one out. Then next up, it's Sean O'Malley by decision. Then after that, Aljamain Sterling inside the distance. At that point, you're two legs down, and then you see how well Sterling comes out. You have to be feeling good. And then Islam Makhachev by submission or decision. An underdog parlay, all four of them underdogs, plus 19,000 turns, $5 into 974. I mean, that's just, that's just crazy. I can't imagine how crazy I would be going if I hit something like that. We'll keep it rolling. Eight legs for Adam Hartman, plus 11,460. Mohamed, Kayo, uh, Armin Petrosian, Carol Hosa, Mohamed Mahayev to win by finish. This almost didn't hit. I mean, Mahayev gets that finish in, you know, the the waning moments of that fight. Aljamain Sterling, Islam Makhachev, and Sean O'Malley. He turns $50 into 5,780. Just a great night for Adam Hartman. Shout out to him. Wow. Uh, Kyle Baalo fan uh, is literally this guy's name. He hits plus 11,449. Uh, he's just all over the place. Bilal Muhammad, Manon, Dariush, Makhachev, Sterling, O'Malley. A lot of these were anchored by O'Malley, uh, including this next one. Jim Boy Jr., Jimmy, Sean O'Malley with Aljamain Sterling inside the distance, plus 1,200, puts $100 down on that, comes back with 1,397. And then last but not least, I just had to give a shout out or just, a, you know, the cojones on Andy Cap and going into the third round, he took Sean O'Malley money line plus 840 and he put $100 down on that. Uh, so shout out to him. That's uh, I don't know if I would have had the balls to do that. So shout out to my man, Andy Caps. And uh, that is the big hitters for UFC 280. A lot of people turning a little amount of money into a lot amount of money. So shout out to them and congratulations. A lot of big winners. A lot of people feeling good about themselves. I feel like, you know, I tuned in and you were kind of lamenting the fact that you didn't have the best prelims. It yeah, was the prelims it, that it was interesting to watch you in real time react to your bets. Yeah, I'll to say see that intensity. A touch toned down. Yeah, a little more tame. Really? Because I've never actually yeah. seen it. O'Malley Yan, that that reaction's probably a little bit different if I'm sitting on my okay. couch. All right. I feel like my jaw just dropped if I'm sitting on my couch. Few four letter words getting uttered. Uh, I can throw a I couple can, things at me, yeah. maybe not throwing things, but a, a few few four letter words are definitely getting undered. Uh, if I'm watching next time, I think you should just let it fly <laughs> to be honest. Like, I we want to see it's pretty, it's bad. pretty intense. Yeah, are we throwing it's, things at the TV? It's not, I Come mean, it, the tension gets so high, you want to just say, you don't want to hey, talk I'm to sorry. Him. Uh, and then, then that's just gonna let I've it. seen that before, I've seen that situation play out. That was at Where? PFL. Hey, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, just to just, but the worst part about that one is that the tension wasn't high there. Yeah, I know, but it was like hand on the on the, the, knee. On the knee. Yeah, it felt like a. a hey, I'm sorry, bit of, man. Yeah, it felt like condescending. Oh, like, oh. put the hand oh, on the knee, no. and, like looked me in the eye, and was like, "It's okay, bud. It's all right." Wow, like, kind of patting me like a dog a little. You'll bit. live to fight another day, type of thing. I should have during the last stream. I should have gone into Frank. I should have had a portable camera follow me in, and I should have put my hand on Frank's knee and been like, "It's oh, okay, man. bud." Oh, that would have been good. You just cost us the part line for the fifth straight. No, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. A um, couple more things before we go. Sure. Where's Islam Makhachev on the pound for pound rankings now? Man, are they going to build? Here's the question: Are they going to build this as one versus two? No, oh, okay. it's not number so two. Yet. Come on. I'm just I, listen. Pass. I wouldn't put it well, past them. If Izzy loses, I mean, Izzy's two right now. No, but I mean, Izzy. Nah. Oh yeah. By the way, will he, even will ahead, he by the ahead way, of Dustin Poirier. This, this is where the he doesn't have the names on the resume comes. Uh, you know, the top guys on the resume comes into play. He's not. He can't just like vault into that into that top list. And where do you think he ranks? He. he you, I, well, if this, you bring up a good point, if Izzy loses to Alex next month, this. 
what does pound for pound mean? I don't know. Something different. To I, I saw know. someone ask Is Dana. it resume? Mm. Is it who's the best fighter in the world? Charles is three and Dustin is eight. He has to be ahead of both of them. Well, yeah, but also he's not going. Charles to. beat Dustin. Yeah, he's ahead of him. I'm saying. No, but I'm saying, does he get those same points? I mean, I guess that's like MMA math. It doesn't. I saying, mean, Islam. Based on how I've seen the pound for pound lists develop, it's a resume conversation versus who's the best. Mm. That's that's how I've seen these develop. It's not really the the spirit of what I believe pound for pound used to be or or was invented to be, which was if weight classes were irrelevant, who who is the best fighter? You know that that type of conversation. It has become much more of a who has the best resume conversation. Um, well, right now, as far as the UFC. Uh, pound for pound, because we're just going by yeah. how they're going to promote it. Volk, Izzy, Charles. Yeah, think about how these are th these are done by who's accomplished more, who has a better Kamaru. Resume. But Leon Kamaru. sprung up to six. How the fuck is Kamaru one? above Leon? But this is my point, right? No, no, no. If you beat the guy, you take his spot. No, so that's not how that's, the, crazy. that's not how it has developed. I'm not arguing with you that that's oh, this right. Is Leon not unranked before that fight against Kamara? Yeah, he Leon would have been to in six. the pound for pound. So, so I think Islam has the ability to spring pretty high into these. Yeah. I, yeah what's your prediction? Ask the guy he beat. I'm going to guess seven. You, but you think Charles will remain above him? I think no. it's possible. I think that's just stupid. He but beat him. See, this, the whole, thing the whole thing is, is because because yes, nobody, I know, but the whole thing is fictitious. Is worth, pound for pound to me is how would everyone do if they were at the same weight that's, class, that's right? That's what it's yeah. supposed to be, but it is not. Well, he beat the guy, so we know the answer to that one question. How could he not be above him? That's, that's not how this works anymore. But this is stupid. This is a resume conversation. That's, that's, how, that's what pound for pound has become. But that doesn't mean it's it became, right, by the way. Who has the better resume, Kamaru Usman or Alex Volkanovsky? No, that okay, was the I'm not argument say, for all this time. Let's not talk about what it's become. Let's talk about what we well, think. You said would you it be want to deal with would it what be, it looks like. If Izzy loses next month, even if he wins, where would you put Islam? Are you asking me where I would yes, put him? Yes, you, you. you not me? what these jamokes would do. I don't even know if they're human yeah, beings. Islam ranks pretty high for me. Is he Islam, two? It, no, he's not two, but he ranks pretty damn high. Top five? Top I five. don't put him above Kamaru. I don't put him above Volkanovski. Francis? I don't put him above... GC says two. No, 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 no. I'm, oh, counting, I'm counting. I'm counting. Okay. Oh, Thanks. Yeah, I want to see if you can a debate for me. Um, Leon? No, come on. Of course he's... Aljo? Mm, maybe not. It's also but like... It's hard. Who that wins this hard. fight, right? That one's hard. Mm. Yeah, see, but that's the thing. Now, now okay, you have two Dustin, different Dustin, Yuri... Davison. He has to be above He's there. above Dustin. John Jones? How's John Dustin, Jones still in the Dustin, rankings? This guy has a problem. fought in almost three Dustin's years. in his weight class. And if you don't think Dustin beats Islam, that's an easy one to, to do. He's above. Because I don't think it's a resume thing. I've never thought of it that way. Um, but that is what it has become. The UFC's rankings, you know, even anybody's rankings have become who has a better resume, which I don't think is, is the spirit of it. John Jones is still on this thing. Stipe is still on this thing. Burbank leader. Uh, Inside Fighting Radio, like the people that vote on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, the voting committee yeah, yeah. as a whole. I, I legit don't know if those are actual real people. Only guy that I know like that's real from station. that list is our friend Rob DeMello. Oh, shut up, my guy. Yeah, why? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still don't even <laughs> know why he does it. Uh, but that, I think, listen, I'm just saying, I'm not going to put it past them that they say one versus two. But he would have to be two. How's he? Yeah, they're just going to juice the thing. They're just oh, going to okay. yes. Okay. They always yeah, I mean, do this. The rankings make sense uh, anyway. Yes. They can just throw no, them in there if you, they want. The evidence would suggest that it's resume comparisons and Islam doesn't have the resume to be number two. This whole thing. Remember, Habib was never number one until the very last fight of his career. Hmm. The whole thing has always been resume, 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 resume. To me, it, it shouldn't be that's resume. Not, it should I be agree. everyone's the same weight class who's winning the fight. That's not historically what this has represented. There's no way he gets to number two, in my opinion. Do you like Patty versus Jared Gordon? Yeah, I do. As far as... By the way, who's the has, has the line come out for that, GC? Uh, I believe it has, and I want to say it was much closer than I expected it to be. I, I like that Does fight. Patty win that fight? Na, na, na. It is Can. right now on DraftKings Sportsbook, minus 165, Patty Pimblett. Is this the closest he's been? Oh, for sure. Man, I could see a world where Jared Gordon goes in there and grinds him real bad. He's tough, Jared. He's very... See, that's why I like this fight. Though. Yeah. No, it's a test. This, is, we this start is the first fight where I'm really thinking, is Patty... This is the first fight where we're going to have the answer to, can Patty Bimblet be a top-ranked fighter? 
Oh, no. Finally getting the answer to that question. Sorry, Patty closed as a minus 145 against Luigi. He did? Yeah, against Vendramini. Wow. I guess it was his I like, debut. I like this fight. I like this fight. This card's looking good. The I problem... Wish Nickel was staying on. Yeah. The problem with all the Patty fights has always been, well, if they beat Patty, can you do something with them? And I feel like Jared Gordon could could go on a run. He's, he's very likable guy. Very likable, has a great story. Like, yeah, you could do something with, with Jared winning this fight. That, I think, was the missing ingredient for all these talks of, you know, who to book against Patty Pimblett is like, yeah, if they win, is it going to be Barbarina versus versus uh, Sage North cut all over again? Or can you actually propel this guy and, and push him? And I think Jared Jared makes sense. Who wins? I would I would say, Gor- I, I think stylistically, Gordon oh, has the tools. Wow. To grind him. I can tell you a lot of people are going to bet Gordon. You think so? I think people Especially like dog money? fading I mean, Patty. Wow. I mean, a lot of people bet Jordan Levitt. Gordon decision? I mean, that I don't know. Feels like it's either Gordon decision or a Patty sub. Could be. No, I could. I mean, it's gonna be a good on fight. His feet, I think. I think there's there's a potential there too for Patty. I like it. It feels like an appropriate step up. This feels like the right. Can't say after this fight he's not fighting tough guys. Um, yeah. You know, would you have like again? He was. He had been through a long Cage Warriors career, so was he ready to fight these guys off the bat? You can make that case, by the way. You can make the case that he could have been fighting Jared Gordon's off the bat in the UFC, but they took the slower route, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that because they built him up, and he's now a huge star. Um, It's going to be interesting, though. He likes to take some time off between fights. Fights in December, if they're going to the UK in March, that would be a big turnaround for him, and you'd think you'd want him on that card, right? Especially if it's in front of, what, 90,000, 85,000 people? Yeah, but I think... With Patty knowing that that turnaround is coming, I think he just not going to let himself go. Owns the diet in a little bit, and and he'll be fine to go in March. Level of interest as of right this moment on a Monday, Jake Paul Anderson Silva. Not super high. Wait, on a scale of one to ten, scale where are you at? One to ten, I'm at like a six. I know I'm going to watch it. I'm not like counting down the hours to it. Are you going to lay some See? lumber? I already did. I took a terrible line on Anderson Silva. <laughs> when it first came out, right? Yeah. I thought I was... I mean, uh, Two down, weeks in maybe. a row, I've gotten, a, I've gotten bad lines. I'm going to be in the booth for the entire card. Wow. wow. Yes. Jake Paul. Is this man. breaking news? Does anybody know this? I don't know. Did I say it? I don't know about that. Thank you, Frank. Oh. Yeah, the uh, the first time he when he fought Tyron Woodley, I was in the booth... The booth. It's not really the booth. I was ringside on on commentary, whatever, with yeah. Hall of Famers, Mauro Ronaldo and Al Bernstein for the highly anticipated Tommy Fury versus Anthony Taylor fight. Then uh, then I came back for the main event. This time, I'm there from start to finish. Okay, well, Love my it. six just jumped to Thank a nine. You. Well, I thought you guys knew that. And I was like a little <laughs> bit bummed. I mean, do you want to know about Dr. Mike versus Chris Avila? Because I could tell you about Dr. Mike versus Chris Avila. I'm really well, impressed I'm, with this I'm guy, by the way. I'm waiting for a line on, on Dr. Mike. I'm looking to hammer that. I, I've said this in our text, but I have to say this. Dr. Mike, the line about putting his Hippocratic oath aside to do harm. He's great. Chris that's Avila, amazing. That's the funniest thing ever. He's really good. By the way, he's going to have a massive fight, size no advantage. Idea. He's going to have a massive size advantage. The guy's 85, and Avila once fought in the UFC at 45. Yeah. Um, you know, he's had one fight but, I mean, against Idubs. You guys saw that, right, back in, in May? Who fought him? Of Mike. course. Idubs. Dr. Mike? Yeah. yeah. I didn't see this. You know no, Idubs? No. Do you know who Idubs is? No. <laughs> <laughs> is he a somebody? But uh, <laughs> is this like can't beat that? <laughs> uh, Chris Avila, you know, whatever you think of Chris Avila and, and his run in UFC belts, or you know, wherever, the dude's a real fight. Like he's a legit fighter against Doctor Mike, who's you know, as you said, one and zero with a win over Idubs. So like he's yeah, so size popular advantage. on social media, it's unbelievable. Doctor Mike, yes, good looking doctor. He told me he gives great advice. We did the fighter meetings last week. He joined from his doctor's office um so he's wearing the stuff he is like and and he's talking about his business Wait, what kind of doctor is he by the way do we know I, uh pretty sure he's just like a a general doctor okay. but so uh general, yeah practitioner yeah, gp is. right uh, in summit new jersey and um oh so we can have him in studio yeah what? oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. oh he Mike no is? he lives in uh he lives in the city he's actually really likable he's incredibly likable great story his mother passed away of cancer him and his dad were very depressed. He went to box 10 years ago to try to do something, fell in love with it, has been kind of boxing casually for 10 years, 
decides to get a little more into it, gets called out by this guy Idubs, takes the fight. It was a huge... They I'm sold out the University of South Florida, I think it was, arena. They sold it out in May. I think the gate was over a million for this like creator clash event. And now he gets this opportunity. The dude has over 10 million subscribers. Again, I know people, it's not for everyone. Six to a seven. You bu- he's you he's so likable. I'll, I watched this video with my son of him trimming his gigantic dog, and we were both captivated by it. It's just, he's got a great social media team. And he's on like, you know, TikTok, this, that. I'm actually surprised that you don't know more about him, Mr. TikTok. Uh, yeah, he, I've never seen him. Good looking guy, dated Miss America. I mean, the guy, the guy's got a lot. Dr. Mike, yeah. sounds like he's winning. Dr. Mike life. is killing. Yes, yeah, Nets fan. Jeez, Dr. Nets, Mike. Yeah, he's, uh, went to a practice in the what, park. What kind of fan? Nets fan. No, they brought him on the court last week. Anyway, you got that. Um, you know, we could talk about the Alexandra uh, Santiago Antonio Neves fight, you know, rematch of a 2016 we, we show box. Sure. <laughs> 118 pounds. Mm-hmm. We could talk about that. Of course, Ashton Silva, H2O. Um, whose yeah. prospect signed by MVP? You guys know about yeah, him. Yeah, Eighteen years sure, old sure. was discovered by Floyd. Up and coming, uh, hottest thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of course, you know, Jake and Anderson. Um, it's a lot I to like. Yeah. Uh, what time you think they'll be making the main event walk? Oh God. Um, I think the uh, the main card starts at nine Pacific, uh, uh, nine p.m. Eastern, not uh, six Pacific. Ooh, that's um, a late one. No, main card. I mean, UFC pay per views main card start at ten. Yeah, and how many sudden, fights are actually on the main card? Five. Oh, really? For boxing? Yeah. All right. Yeah, but, you know, um, Dr. Mike is four rounds. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, and, and of right. course, how could I forget Le'Veon Bell versus Uriah Hall? Oh, yeah. Is there a line on that? Yeah, there is. What do we got? Right now on DraftKings Sportsbook, uh, it is not available, but out of their oh. books, he's <laughs> minus 480, Le'Veon Bell plus 330. Are you comfortable with saying, I don't know? I mean, <laughs> say it, Rick. Just say, say it. I mean, I, I'm, uh, my ears are perking up on that Le'Veon Bell line right now. I'll tell you that. Well, at some books, you can get them for as much as plus 400. Uh, I mean, if uh, if the former running back tempts you with that, I ain't mad at it. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you something. Uh, also spoke to him last week. Very impressive guy. Uh, is taking this very seriously, whatever that means. I think, like, Obviously, he was a running back, and obviously, this is a second career. But I was just—he's re- a vegan. I was just really impressed with his dedication to this. I don't know. I was impressed with him. You know, some dudes come in and they're like not so impressive. I- I'll tell you, like Uriah was very prickly. Shocker. Yeah, but that's his, that's been his mo. But this guy, I, look, I don't know what to expect. You knock out Adrian Peterson. That has nothing yeah, to do not- with knocking out Uriah. Well, I mean, it's no indication. Yeah, that show he's got power, right? Yeah. It shows that. This this was the I mean we're we're right back in the same position not to the same extent but this is the Jake Paul conversation. All Jake Paul showed in his first couple fights was that he could knock somebody out, right? Now he's fighting one of the best strikers in history. I one really have zero idea. Lived. I have zero idea how but this dude, goes. Dude, the line is you're talking about Paul. Flipped. Yeah. What is it now? Right now, Jake Paul is minus 135 on DraftKings Sportsbook. Anderson Silva coming back at plus 110. I got Anderson Silva at minus 135. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I it legit like dummy, flipped. I, I would double down on Silva. You got Silva? Yeah, man. Wow. Silva decision? I just did it nah, riding with the MMA community. And Why, you think he knocks course. him out? Yeah. Holy crap. Anderson Silva knocking Jake Paul yeah, out? Yeah, I think so. You can take that plus 200. Here's the thing. Wow. And I think this was a, a huge part of Israel Adesanya's early success in the UFC is you don't need to be like Tyron Woodley, right? Big puncher, but like a a swinger, right? Like he's, th- he's throwing big shots, and that's where the power is generated from. Anderson Silva has always been a sniper type guy. And, and this, this is the comparison that I'm making to Israel Adesanya in the UFC. You can't when you don't see those shots coming, when you're not on that skill level striking wise, and you don't see those shots coming, those are the ones that put you to sleep. It's not the it's not the one from the hip. And then to Jake Paul's credit, he showed his beard because when Tyron Woodley did hit him with yeah. one of those, he actually took it. So Yeah, he got rocked. Shout out, shout out to him for that. Um, because when those land, those are those are heavy. But those like ones you can't see, the little sniper moves, that's where Anderson Silva, I think, is is gonna have the opportunity to take Jake Paul out. I can't and that's wait. what I think makes this fight intriguing. If if Anderson gets into the groove that he was in against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., where he starts really feeling himself, and it's old school Anderson, pff, he has not fought 
anyone. He has not faced anything like that. There's there's a very big striking gap. How big is the boxing gap is is going to be what's interesting about this fight. There's a right. very big striking gap. Updated nine nine to a ten. Now I'm at a ten. It's it's, yeah. <laughs> it's big. It's big. The other thing is like Woodley. Ben, they never put on boxing gloves. Before. I mean, I know they they probably trained in the past, but Anderson has done this. None of this is new for him. Yeah, wouldn't it be so much better if this was Tommy Fury though? Fuck yes. Stop. Stop. Hey, he's still talking about Tommy Fury. I don't know why, but it's, it's funny on Tapology. Oh, wow. you, guys, you guys came along with me very quickly for how. That's much not what I said. I got early on. That's not what I said. I'm not going into this again. I'm it's still a, hoping we get that fight. <laughs> oh God, please no. Isn't Tommy fighting someone on that no. November 12th card? He's fighting. Um, he wins. Would he you ever know? All that, yeah. all that, all that Love Island support he gets. Would you ever know he was even fighting? I mean, it's been a tough stretch for Tommy. No yeah. doubt about that. Yeah. If if Anderson wins, is the Jake Paul thing done? No, no. I you still could do Nate. There's, there's, I think yeah, do there's Nate. so yeah. much money to be made if you're Jake uh, Paul. It loses so much luster. Nah, you don't oh, think it loses yeah. luster? Jake Paul wins and losses do not matter. I don't know if that's the case. Do not matter. I think part of the if appeal he wins, here is that he's running through these guys. Definitely. If he wins, if he wins, it's gonna be. Wait, eh, definitely but, Frank White. You agree with me? Not yeah, a I agree that Jake Paul's appeal is going to be lessened if he loses. Especially Big time. If he gets knocked out. Yeah, if he gets KO'd. Big time. Out cold. No. But then, then, then the, the aura no, no, no. of invincibility you don't think it takes is gone. One, one You're crazy. Thing. You Come are on. crazy. Okay, this everyone's thing. aura of invincibility yeah, goes away. Okay. Yes. So um, what guy. I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, Jake Paul getting knocked out is equivalent to another fighter getting knocked out. It doesn't hurt him significantly. This one's different. This one's different. I don't. I don't think so. If he gets on social media, starts building up a fight against Nate Diaz, it's the same. I don't know, man. What, the by same. the way, what, what, what about this world Is that we Jake, would be living in where Diaz would be coming off the win and Jake Paul would be coming off the loss? Crazy. Like, you would have thought three months ago, I right? I mean, it's the same yeah. thing. Like, does all of Nate's losses in the UFC, are you now like, eh, you know what? It's just different with Jake because his whole thing is, I'm better than you, I'm better than you, I'm better than MMA fighters, I'm better than these boxers, I'm, I'm better than anyone fighting He'll at 5 and 0. people that he's better than Nate Diaz. He'll it depends him. on how he loses. If it's a close decision, then I, I get it. If it's a knockout in the second round, pff, tough. Then you have to go, then it's maybe not Nate, let's go back to Tommy, get the win over the boxer, and then we build ourselves up. Yeah, there we go. I feel like if he if he beats Anderson, we're going straight to Nate. We should yes. go straight to Nate. I think so. Yeah, for sure. The Woodley fight what, didn't exactly inspire confidence. They right? still won fair and square, went the distance against a former UFC champ. There was no controversy. But this, this is my point. Like the, the, the result, I think the it's result is so separate from Jake Paul. The result, because he, like many greats, like Conor McGregor, Right, when it comes to the promotion game, yeah, he can make you believe. He can convince you again. He he he's not in the dirt when it happens. He can convince you again. You don't think if he started calling out now, it's now it's finally time to go to the well and get that fight against Dylan Dennis. Start talking that one up. Oh please, you don't God, think no. that you don't, you don't think that people will be interested in? You're that? not down for that, Ariel? No, no, thanks. Uh, it, just it'll to happen give a, overnight. A, a quick update. Uh, Tommy Fury will be fighting on the yeah, yeah, Mayweather yeah. Deji card in, in the UAE Coca-Cola Arena November yeah. 13th. High stakes stuff against uh Bamba. This Bamba. Is, yeah, you this know was the big draw. This was the big draw. Our mutual friend John Beer, good friend of uh, Bamba's. Yeah. Oh yeah. The yeah, guy yeah. who's fighting uh That's right. Yeah. November 13th, I will uh I'll be tuned in. A Sunday. That'll be It's a Sunday after, after MSG. Yeah, I'm hoping maybe wake up in the morning. A little UAE breakfast at uh, Cafe <laughs> Mogador. <laughs> Morning yeah. is uh, but, by the way, <laughs> I, questionable. I saved this for this moment. I didn't put it in the text because I wanted to save it for this. Oh, moment. great! Can't what wait. kind of psychopath? Yes, goes, goes to a restaurant mm. without checking the hours. All right, All right. I, yeah, there is a rebuttal to this. I can't agree with that, but also the rebuttal is, uh, you know, you got to try this incredible breakfast place. Like, yeah. oh my God, the breakfast here is just to die yeah. for. Like, you just, this place is legendary. Oh, go go check out their breakfast. breakfast. I just assumed, we only had one option, and that was to go to Cafe Mogador. I hear all this breakfast talk. I assumed, you know, 9 o'clock on a, on a Saturday morning wasn't too early to ask. 10 o'clock, we're starting to think about the lunch hour. I mean, I refer back to what Can I just say, 9.30 is a weird time. To open. Wait a minute. Uh, it, like, you had me get there at 8.30. Oh, really? Yeah. Who, me? No. Connor was like 8.30. They didn't open till 9.30. That's weird. Uh, all I'm saying is... No, I said 8.30 because I, I, I'll i be honest. Yeah, I just didn't check the hour. If you're a, <laughs> But if you're a breakfast place, 
I don't know. If I get a high recommendation about what a What time do place, breakfast places convinced. usually it's, open? Here, that's what here's I your problem. They're not really a breakfast place so much as a... They're more a brunch place, right? Like, oh, now this the is, truth comes out. This is William... Wow. This is, no, no, no. And, 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 actually, actually, yeah, brunch you're right. I've never been... Would be. What do you eat at brunch? You eat breakfast food. I'm not saying that they don't make breakfast food. You're right. Unless you're in the lunch mood. Unless you're in the lunch mood. Yeah. You're right. I've never gone there for breakfast. It's a brunch. It's brunch. A brunch spot. Brunch. Wow. You're in hipster world. <laughs> right. Let's roll great the tape back of all the breakfast. Yeah, great brunch breakfast to me that. is breakfast food. Great time to clear this yes. up, boys. Brunch I, is I breakfast appreciate food. that. Correct. Also, another thing in my defense, I think every time I Googled it, it just said open now. Uh, uh, so, yeah, it wasn't like, uh, hey, we're I mean, a breakfast place that doesn't open until, you know, we, like, we just casually walk in and just a little. There was a guy Google. cleaning the sidewalk outside. So you didn't have it? Of course not. No, what were we going to do? Couldn't make it? Yeah, we had a little something to do on Saturday, so we couldn't yeah. hang out for an hour until it opened. Uh, you know, I had to take a picture with it, and the guy was like, uh, we're closed. You know that, right? I'm like, well, now I do, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, you took the picture before? Before you I, knew? No, no, no. I pulled up. Okay. Frank had let me know while I was on the way. Uh, Did you it. tell the story mm. to him, to the guy? No, no, I didn't the want to. Did not want us he, he just kind of smiled emptily well, at me. And was I feel like, like if cool. you try, if you told him the story, maybe you can slide in for that private. Mm. Well, Frank had already left. Frank, real, like, Frank told me to meet him there. So uh, when I got there, he was nowhere to be found. He had already moved but, on to the but, next. Wow. You just go, hey, you know, here's the story. We talked about it on this show. You know, we're promoting it big time. Never it's heard of it. Be this whole thing. No, I don't you care. Just let us in. Just please, no. Nine thirty is when we open. Thank you. Doesn't take anything away from the fact that it's worth going. Oh yeah, back. I mean, just go another. Uh, hopefully, time. I will go back. Yeah, go in Brooklyn, by the way. I can't vouch. By the way, I bet you the Brooklyn location was open. No, I looked. <laughs> they, they didn't open until. 10. We never vouched for Manhattan. Hours? Right? So I was a little upset because I trusted Connor on this one. So we show uh, up. Yeah, I'll like, take responsibility. I'll take responsibility. And I, but I, I also will place blame on Ariel and Rick. Wow, I s always said that I didn't vouch for the Manhattan location. <laughs> well, the Brooklyn one didn't open until 10. I don't know anything about the Manhattan location. Um, that leads us to a great point. I'm not really sure how it leads us to it, but uh, we're back tomorrow, guys. We are. Wait, what? So, well, uh, yeah. I don't know if you know this, Frank. We're back tomorrow. So we have to make our picks. And there's a lot to choose from. Ugh. Any tease on, on what we can expect tomorrow? Well, th there's a lot to choose from, right? There's Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva. There's Arnold Allen versus Calvin Cater. Uh, there's Taylor Lomachenko. Oh, what did you say? Katie Taylor by decision. That's right. Uh, Frank, we got some breaking news. That's right. The greatest female boxer of all time. Well, Clarissa Shields is coming. The pride of Ireland, the one and only Katie Taylor on the program tomorrow. Let's go. Let's go, Katie. I'm going to tell her everything that you said about her. <laughs> Do not wear the Serrano shirt. I'm going to tell her everything that you said about Clarissa Shields. Also, our good friend Arnold Allen on the oh, show let's tomorrow. Go. Let's go. Prior to the uh, the big main event fight. And I'm a, more excited uh, about Arnold Allen fight week than I am 280. Yeah, for sure. For sure. The Apex is going to be glorious. Uh, also, first time uh, we ever have the brother of the welterweight champion of the UFC, one Fabian Edwards will be on yeah. the program. He's There's also a Bellator Italy card this week for some <laughs> really strange random. reason. Really random. Um, we'll do the whole on-the-nose thing. We'll do the, uh, the usual Wednesday stuff on a Tuesday, so stay tuned for that. But uh, I think we're out of time, guys. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. We'll see you in uh, 21 hours. This is fun. <laughs> less Three, than. Less than, yeah. Uh, 20 and a half hours. 20 and uh, less than a half hours. Can't 20 remember. hours and 23 minutes. That's right. That's exactly right. Thank you for that. All right, guys. Uh, Frank, you're just going to sleep over, right? You've been here three out of the last four I just nights. grabbed the cot from underneath the desk. Yeah. yeah, that's the move right there. That is the move. Uh, well, I can't wait. Can't wait to be back in 20 hours from now. Can't wait to have Katie Taylor on the program. For now, though, we shall say goodbye. Been a fun day. Put 280 to bed. Great time to be alive. You know, I appreciate... I'll say this. Positive thing here. Clip this off and send it to the brass in Las Vegas. You appreciate the UFC. You appreciate the sport. Regardless of the politics, regardless of the economics, you appreciate it now more than ever when you can get a Volkanovski versus Oliveira fight right after... A, excuse me, a Volkanovski versus Makhachev fight right after a Volkanovski versus Oliveira fight. No, I screwed that up. Let me start this over. You appreciate the sport. You appreciate the politics. You appreciate it all. When you could get a Volkanovski versus Makhachev fight right after a Makhachev versus Oliveira fight. Why? Because then you see what's happening in the world of boxing 
and you don't get Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence, and you don't get Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk, and you don't get Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua. You get these fights that no one asked for. And so, yes, we are blessed to be covering the sport. We are blessed to be fans of the sport because you get to see the fights and you get to see great performances like we saw, including the one that we saw from TJ Dillashaw in the heart that he exemplified on Saturday. Thank you very much to all our guests this week, or today, I should say. Thank you very much to Manon Fioro. Thank you very much to Aljamain Sterling. Thank you very much, Chito Vera. Thank you very much to Mohammed Mohaev. Thank you to the crew. Thank you to all of you. Back tomorrow, same time and place until I say peace. I'm out of here.